Cave Street Talk for this week. So, did we enjoy this week's Coronation Street or not? I think, I'm thinking that we kind of talk through the episodes and then we'll see what people can, can figure it out for themselves whether we enjoyed it as I'm, we go. Oh, okay. Don't want don't to spoil it for anybody. We don't want to also bias anybody. What do you mean? You know, by coming out the gate and saying, oh, it was terrible. I, I don't want to... <laughs> but it might not have been. It might have been brilliant. Was it summer in it this been. week? Oh dear. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start off with the Max Dreamism storyline. That's been a favourite for a little while, hasn't it? So that's got a top billing this week as well. You might have to move that because you've put, oh, sorry, I'll put them right in front of I'll me. I'll put them right in front of the notes. There you go. Um, Read in the Red is going to be next. Stephen, what's been up to this week? Here's a good storyline title, yeah. Gemma. John's Tape. Yeah. John's Tape. Yeah, John's Tape. Get it. John's, John's tape. tape. John's Tape. That's a good one. He wants to read Little Women um, with me. Su- Summer Baby is going to no, come next. Little Women? Yeah, it was a little bit a study guide to little women we heard this was week. It? Was that actually Graham Hawley being brought back? Yes, can he wasn't tell in us? the credits. By the time we were recording this, the episode hasn't been on, so there hasn't been a did, big thing saying, Oh he... look, it was Graham Hawley who re- returned to, re- to voice little women. Or did he I do that? Whether he made originally that in the time? For Sally. Yeah, I know, I'm wondering whether that was something from the archive footage. Oh god, I should have asked Biff and Dom, shouldn't I? Yeah, anyway, I people will know Too soon enough. Know. Um we've then got the jacket in you two storyline, the uh, continuing uh, misadventures of Steve and Tim, um, followed by the Kenard. I mean, they don't Aquois. die at the end of this, just no, so you know, no. so don't get, look um, forward to a good ending. And then the Lawrence storyline, and I wanted to try and come up with something that was kind Lawrence, of festive yeah. and dentist related, and the best I could come up with was a stocking. You've got something wrong with your teeth. Stocking filler, because he, he does fillings, and it's a stocking. Christmas. Great filler. Not so good, is it? Right, Max Dreamism this week. So um, on Monday, Maria is banging on about Griff again to Gary in the cafe. Gary's not really had much to say this week, has he? He's just kind of been standing behind Maria in the background thinking, oh. He's like, well, I can't murder anybody, so I don't know what my use is. Of he's, he's, just, he's just restraining himself. He's really holding himself back from murdering Griff. Maybe that's how this is all going to end. He's just going to burst out of his shell and... Who knows? Uh, Anyway, she's worried because she's going to a council meeting later about the Christmas market or something uh, or other because it seems that Victoria Street has a Christmas market now every year. They had and it they last don't year, plan they? it until the day before. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And Maria's in charge. Yeah, uh, something like that. This is why I think that they should open up the uh, the Brewery Lane area because they're just basically closing off that road to traffic for the best part of... Well, it seems to be a month now, isn't it? Because part of the meeting um, later on is saying we can't call it Christmas market because it's going on till January. So there's literally no traffic going down Victoria Street. All the passing trade that Archie Shuttleworth is missing. I was like, I know, well, he's dead. Tragic stuff. He won't, what? won't miss it. He's not dead. Archie Shuttleworth. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, George Shuttleworth, Quite I meant. Archie out, Shuttleworth Michael. is definitely dead. Um, um, well, everybody knows, it, you know, December's not a very busy time for shops. <laughs> I, I, anyway. It's going on. And, um, and there's this nasty councillor, Len, who, um, who went to the papers about Sally having a wee in the street. He's going to be say there this, as well. Everybody. And I don't know if we're just horrible people. Well, I know we're horrible people, but I don't I'm know if this not, is I'm why. Lovely. This is why I have this thought. But um, I was totally on Len and Griff's side this week, being horrible to Maria, just because. I think this is where um, the story has hit a bit of a snag. I, I, I can't get behind her at all. <laughs> um, but let, let's, let's see as we go. Well, Don't, I could get behind her. Get She's ahead. standing in front of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. But even Billy survived that with Maria. Um, oh, she's he doesn't, so... He doesn't have the power of angels she's to got um, fantastic carry him gently to the ground. She's got a fantastic hairspray, so she probably just bounced off. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Anyway, so, um, we, have, we have Muneer coming back, who was the, um, can we have a council, uh, can we have the community centre and turn it into a refugee sanctuary type man from last week? And he's there with Maria and Yasmin and Speed Dial. He's still not sure about whether they should do this centre, not with Griff around, because having him hanging around intimidatingly and menacingly outside community centre just kind of makes it not worth the effort, it seems. He doesn't seem it's to not, think that no, Weatherfield is the right hang area. On, he's not saying it's not worth the effort. He's saying this is a, this is a facility for vulnerable people who already face discrimination i don't really want to chuck them into the jaws of a bunch of racists you yeah maybe um, i think um on uh fa- on our facebook group i'm pretty sure it's shannon that brought this up like she's she's so entitled and ignorant this white woman's trying to 
come in as their saviour. Talking about Maria here. Yeah. She won't listen to him when she's saying, he's saying, we're not going to open the centre because there's a bunch of racists that are trying to shut it down. It's not a good idea. And she's like, no, no, don't worry about it. No, we'll yeah. show that. It's like, well, yeah. No, it's not down to you to decide this, Maria. Just listen to him when he tells you what's in his best interest for him. But Gemma, you forget community. one very important God, thing here. Me, what is it? It's been a lifelong dream to turn the community centre into a refuge drop-in point, hasn't it? Come on, we all know this. Okay. Um, so I, I neglected to remember. <laughs> yeah. um, Alia comes in and she says, um, I, "You never guess what? You know that poll last week that Griff did that said everybody wants the the centre, though nobody wants the centre being used for refugees. Well, he's only gone and falsified the results of that survey. How do you know? and I, was, I don't really know how she knew that. And he's like, I don't care because if they he's probably gone said that much of an extreme length. He registered. says, what else would they go? If you he, he goes so far as to falsify a poll, he could be capable of anything. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> respects internet polls and their integrity. Yeah. Somebody just who'd like, be willing to break that social contract. Just like when... Goodness knows what they would do next. Just like when Trump falsified that poll that made him the President of the United States. And then why trouble. did he go on to after Don't that? Don't get us in trouble. <laughs> I know he's back on Twitter now, isn't he? He could Is roast he on Twitter? us. I, I, know, I know that Elon... Added him, but I oh, I don't know, I don't it. know. Um, that, uh, so anyway, Yasmin. Really on first name terms. <laughs> Yasmin comes up with a great idea. So what if they made up their own petition? Genius, Yasmin. This was. We could get people to tick a box to say, no, we do want the centre turned into a drop-off point for, I... or as a refuge point for refugees. Yes. I was just tearing my face off at the feeble-mindedness of this entire <laughs> week of... People. You're showing your cards too early, Gemma. I know. I really hate to say this, that like this this week again, like last week, it took us so much longer to watch than normal because we kept pausing it to rant about what the hell was going. What is this? It's not the biggest pause for a rant. That comes in the in the hope. I don't. The thing later. is though, I don't really want to spend too long bashing it because I don't want to be negative. And we've spoken before about how much we admire Coronation Street and, and how hard it must be to to write it. And come up with everything, but I can't. I really find this some some of what happened this week is kind of <laughs> indefensible. <laughs> well, Yasmin's going to make up. You her know own what? Poll. I'm just going to say, not for me. You know, no, not for me. It, it, it's always got something for us. No, no, no. I'm just saying the bits I didn't like. I'm just going to say, not for no, me. No, they've got a, they've got a fish for a wide audience here. They got to spread their nets. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Not for me. Exactly. I'm agreeing, agreeing with you. Anyway, so why don't we use the Christmas market to drum up support for our poll or something or other? So Maria goes to the meeting later and she's trying to convince all the other councillors about this refugee petition idea. Well, her thing. idea is like right. We're going to have a Christmas market, but I want a whole stall and it's just a petition that people have already voted on to say they don't want refugees. But yeah. we're only going to let people that do want refugees to sign the poll and we need a whole desk. Yeah, but they add more depth and layers to this poll later, don't they? Well, this is as far as she's got so far. And Len's like, well, that's crap. No. Also, Len doesn't want to call it Winter Market because it's PC gone mad. I, well, as soon as she said, do you know what we should do? You should call it Winter Market because it's going to be in January as well. I was like, Maria, where do you think you live? <laughs> Have you not heard people talking about this stuff for years and years and years? This is like in America when they go on about Starbucks and their red cups and you can't say Merry Christmas, you have to say Happy Holidays. It's like, you can't just call it Winter Market and not have somebody like Len go, oh, you're trying to ruin Christmas. You're cancelling Christmas. Well, maybe Maria has also been looking at the other poll result that Vogue came out recently to say that less than 50% of people mm. on the census identified themselves as Christian last time. I know, time. but I would also say that um, more people who aren't Christian celebrate Christmas than people who are Christian. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, so it's all a bit fraught and everything there. She goes back to speed dial and gets a phone call. Uh-oh, words got out. She who says I want to cancel Christmas? I just said it. <laughs> Gemma, it was Gemma. She's been to the papers, everybody. No, Maria has a go at Len in the street because he happens to be walking down the road later, of course. And she says, I can't believe you leaked this to the press that I don't want to call it the Christmas market. And now people are saying that I'm the Grinch and I don't want to don't wanna celebrate Christmas. And Len's like, no, I want me. Um, but, but yeah, he clearly is against the idea of this. Um, and Maria says, I know what you're thinking. It's just PC gone mad. <laughs> it's PC gone mad. But it's not going to work. Poor Peter gone mad. <laughs> That's what he does when he gets the gets the whiskey, isn't it? Yeah. Don't let him near the mulled wine. No, yeah, exactly that. And she says, it's not going to work. Nobody's going to care. Just leave it. But 
Um, it goes a little bit wrong for her by the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm sorry, but <laughs> I just so mean. I, I know I, I I don't I don't want to be on the side of everyone here. Like Maria should be the beacon of like everything. Maria and you, Alia. Like honestly, you should you should aspire to be like Maria and and Alia because they're both beautiful, kind, thoughtful, considerate, caring, passionate. They put ideas into they're actions. Pure. And, but I'm just watching this going, ah, yeah, get her. <laughs> Go on, so she's, her. she's been done a pretty good Photoshop, I have to say, of the Grinch. Yeah, well, it's Maria's, really good it's job. her profile picture, or her press picture, photographed to make her look like the Grinch. It was a pretty good job, actually. And Congrats, whoever did that on the Cory Digital team. And the headline? <laughs> yeah, local councillor. <laughs> As in cancel. I just loved it. I was like, oh, this is great. It's this Christmas day. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not supposed to have this reaction, are we? I don't think we are. Are we? I don't know. And are we, we the are. only ones that did? Listen, are we really day, horrible? At the end of the day, we enjoyed that. And that's the most important thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> we, 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 I've got more of a new I think family. you're supposed to think it's funny. I think you're supposed to are yeah. a little bit and then kind of feel ashamed for yourself. No. But no I, I appreciate Maria and have more time for her now since we saw um, Samia filming those scenes in the summer. Oh, Samia's fantastic. Samia's, Samia's got great. a brilliant sense of humour too. She's awesome. And she understands that she's not, you know, one of our favourite can- uh, characters at the <laughs> moment. So I'm sure she wouldn't mind us saying this. I don't, it does, it's fine. It was Honestly, funny. Maria, like... Okay. She's a classic. She's a Corrie oh, legend, is isn't she? She's been around for you know, nine or twenty years, hasn't she? But she gets she? bad news though, Michael. But she gets well, at the bad... end of the end of the episode, she gets yes, worse. The news. council tell her that they don't want this refugee petition stall idea. Like, thinks it's you know that Christmas market that you want to have a refugee petition stall at. We decided it doesn't fit. The Too theme. much of a downer. <laughs> Theme. Well, she she got a new idea. Why didn't she Wednesday. do like we're gonna do a combination <laughs> refugee, refugee petition and waffle stand? Ooh, <laughs> Everyone yeah. would be like, yeah, brilliant. Go for that. that. We really definitely good. go for that. So um, <laughs> the, yeah, on Monday's episode, it's when she sees just the online um article about her with the Grinch, isn't it? And Wednesday's episode opens with her going outside and finding yeah. the calling boy has got a picture of it brilliant. from the, the actual I want front that poster. of the. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we could put it on a wall of Corrie, couldn't we? Please, can we have a copy? Thank you. <laughs> anyway, so she's there trying to tear down this front page that's got um, that's making fun of her, and then Griff drives by in his van and gives her a drive-by mocking. Um, then we have Alia meeting up with Maria later on and tells her, you know what, Maria, I've had another idea. I've got a bit of a brainwave here. So, you know there's these shops here where you can oh buy stuff, God. and the stuff you buy gets donated to refugees. We could do a stall like this. So when people are signing our petition saying, yay, um, yay community centre for refugees, they could also buy them a little Christmas present while they're there. They could buy this them like a the Satsuma or something to, to send thing. to the third world. This took two scenes to explain what this meant. And at the end of it, it still didn't make any sense because the whole concept is nonsense. So they're not going to have things on the stall no. there. But they're going to have a little iPad or something and you say, yes, please, I will have one nutcracker. No, Ollie's expecting people to go to a Christmas market, go up to her stall and she's like, hello, do you not want to buy yourself a Christmas present but spend money anyway? And the people are supposed to say, yes, I don't care about the cost of living crisis. Um, That's perfectly fine with me. And then she says to them, great, that's the first hurdle over. Now give me your credit card details and write them into my laptop. To be fair, no. I don't. I don't think this is as bad idea as Nobody you do. Nobody is going you... to put their their bloody contact their their credit card details into her dodgy laptop. They might do. Well, they're, they're chumps then. I I don't think this is too bad of an idea. Honestly, I think it's quite nice, and I think a lot of people are actually pretty charitable, and I think that this is a better idea than just having a, a, a poll. But um, it, it's Maria's and Alia's idea, so obviously I'm still somewhat against it. Well, I'm just going to say, if they, they're going to, in my mind, I think that my problem, partly my problem with it, is that they've got all these lovely little wooden um, cabiny kind of, like, uh, stalls, don't they? With like, all some yeah. nice wood, and it looks like a little hut, and um, they, they will have decorations on it. But that, in my mind, Ali's just standing like in, like, a blank one. With her, with her laptop going, do you want to buy a present for someone else? <laughs> no! Do you want to buy a present for Alina's grandma? <laughs> wait, wait till she finds out that this already exists on Amazon 
and you can do this at so home. It's the personal touch. And you don't have to go Arlie and get cold. And Stan nice. awkwardly have Arlia explain to you when you're oh, freezing and you just want, spirit, just want to go and get a, a nice Christmas pancake from the stall next door or some hot chestnuts and she's talking to you about just put your credit card details in here and you can buy a candy cane. No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine, honestly. Anyway, so... Um, we also find out, because um, it's related to this story... That What's Gri- wrong with a good old charity tombola? What's wrong That's with what a I naked say. calendar shoot like they did the other year? Well, the ladies this time. If Ali and Maria st- want to raise money for charity, here's my idea. Start OnlyFans. No. Yeah. They get a load of money. She was... After that experience Maria had earlier this week, uh, earlier this year, sorry, where she was deep faked into a rather rude Well, then video. she could just do it for free. Like, she just deep fake herself on OnlyFans. <laughs> Quiz in. Right, okay, good. We need to move on. We're going to a snail's place here. So, Griff's going to be sorting Tracy's roof out because he's a builder, everybody remember. Or slightly sorting it out. So I don't, he's tidying he's, it like, up. He's tidying it up a bit because Arlie can't do it. Tape. Anyway. Anyway, um, so that's happening. Also, later on, Alia is talking to Yasmin, explaining how this stall idea is going to work. She also talks to her about Griff boasting about being in the army earlier because she walks past him and he's like, hey, I was in the army. And then Stu says, oh, I wonder if that's a way that I could get through to Griff. He wasn't in the army, he was in the navy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, he was, Griff said he was in the military. And Stu says, I was in the military, I was in the navy as well, remember? So maybe us, um, us ex-military folk... Can um can find common ground there, and Yasmin's like, don't get involved, Just Stu. Just don't talk to He's him. He's a massive racist, but Stu can't help himself. He's going to the pub later, and Griff's there hanging around by this scaffolding by number one, and Stu like does a double take and is like, oh, shall I do it? Shall I? Shall I defy Yasmin's orders? And he does as well because he wears the trousers in this house. Yeah, yeah, don't tell me what to do. And and Griff's there chatting with Ed, um, because because uh, Griff. Is, 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 well, they're both builders, they're and they like, "I've got some talking about tape building, you. building things." He oh, yeah, that's in... right. He borrows some tape, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. And um, and Griff, uh, uh, Stu goes, "Oh, uh, oh, yeah, you were in the military, like, were you in the army?" And Griff's like, "No, I was in the navy." And Stu says, "Oh, snap, so was I. I was in the navy too. Hey, we're both navy together." And Griff's like, oh, "This is how I feel." That's nice. So anyway, what? I've got work to do. Great, good job for you. <laughs> oh, and he kind of turns away because he's like, he he knows that Stu's involved with Yasmin and 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 all that lot. That he um does not um he doesn't he's, he's not the biggest fan of people working in speed dial at the moment. So Stu is a little bit suspicious of Griff not wanting to talk to him at length about his time in the navy. Maybe he's got PTSD, Stu. You thought of that? Yeah, if you thought of that, maybe he killed. Maybe a man his with mate's his bare submarine hands. sank or maybe something. Maybe he ran over someone with a speedboat. Maybe he sailed into a landmine. Yeah, would sailed into a landmine. Not a landmine. A landmine at sea. <laughs> what do you and he was call like, those? This is unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was trying to say something funny, then it didn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean, everybody. Anyway. <laughs> that's why the, the clue's in the name. <laughs> yeah, we just imagine them all going, we're going to unleash our greatest weapon against the British Navy. <laughs> just going to throw landmines at them. <laughs> no, we won't see it coming. <laughs> Princess Diana's going to be on that, Jenna. Oh, my God. Right, anyway. <laughs> 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 but for the sea. Oh, that Canadian jute farmer was right, I tell you. So, has he got something to hide? <laughs> Stu says. And Griff's like, I'm, I'm not in any mood to engage with this. Stop talking to me. I don't care. And then Ed comes over well, with Dee Dee. He's, he's got his flashing to do, hasn't he? He's not there for chatting, he's there for work. Oh, it's a bit cold for flashing, isn't it? I'd wait until the summer months. Well, it depends on how thick this tape is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It's going to be one of those it's episodes, silly, isn't it? it? It's going to be a little bit silly. A little bit silly today. So Ed comes over with Dee Dee because Ed's new best mate, Griff, turns out he's actually a massive racist. Yeah. And Dee Dee knows about this and she's told her dad and Ed comes over and is like, I've heard all about your racist ways and I want my tape back, please. You're not allowed to use this tape anything up. Yeah. I know that this was supposed to be a big kind of like, yeah, statement, but it just, it was a bit kind of like, my daughter told me I've got to take my tape back off you, please. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just really petty. Like, it would, surely, I don't know, it would have been more powerful if, if I'd have been like, keep your tape, but I think you're a scum. Scumbag. 
you're fixing my neighbour's roof, it's more beneficial that you have the tape. Mm. I just, I I I found it kind of interesting that Griff was willing to engage socially with Ed anyway. I Uh, I thought that was interesting too, yeah. Because uh, it seems that most of his ire is directed towards members of the Muslim community. He does seem, yeah. Um, yeah, it's but, kind of a bit gross to imagine that he probably thinks Ed is one of the good ones, which is just really yeah. Cringy, but Ed horrible. does make a thing, doesn't he? Of saying, oh, "I'm a I'm a proud son of an immigrant." Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's a bit a little bit icky, but um, yeah, go ahead. Well, of course, it's supposed to be go icky. It's supposed to think that Grace is yeah. a disgusting, horrible man. Yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. yeah, it was. Um, I I wonder if we're gonna get into any thoughts of his about about or Griff's thoughts about why he prefers Ed mm. but I don't imagine we will do it's just it, but you're right I think the Ecclesia that are there obviously he doesn't like yeah he doesn't he's got um he doesn't like Muslims he's Islam. scared of Islam yeah so Stu goes back to Speedell later to tell them about Griff he's he's made up his mind at this point that he's definitely lying about being in the military what other reason could there be that he doesn't want to open up about it and Ali is like oh I don't he, he, how can he tell me lie about that I'm going to go and give him a piece of my mind girl so she goes up out to the number one again and finds Griff and his cronies um, in their van and she says oh I know all about your lies people you're supposed to be working for would find this very interesting if you're misrepresenting yourself and saying you used to be in the Navy, but actually you probably just had a little sailboat in the bath when you were younger. But he says, look, you better not tell anyone about this. Um, and because if you do, then I'm going to come and get you or something like that. He basically... Do you think he was or wasn't in the military? I think probably Navy? we're supposed to think he wasn't now. Okay. It's like a bit of a funny thing to lie about, but I suppose it it, it builds into the narrative of... I fought for my country and now these people are coming into mm. it and ruining it or something like that. So I, w- I do wonder like, what if there's anything else that we think we know about him that, that isn't true? I don't know. Um, so anyway, so he kind of... Alia's standing up to him, but she's kind of left fairly shaken because he basically says, don't you tell anybody um, or else I'm going to get you. He hasn't admitted you. it though, has he? No, no. Stop trying to besmirch me. Stop yeah. trying to lead the smear campaign against me. So Dee Dee and Alia meet together in the cafe later and Dee Dee talks about, oh yeah, when I was working in LA, I whistle blew a racist and he was really handsy. And I got handsy. an award for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a little star on a plinth and to say that, I, that I'm that um, i I'm a massive, uh, what, I can't remember what the award, Rising, Rising Star, star award. It, She got the Rising Star. Her mum got the Golden Heart Award. I know, they're just an award winning family. They are. James has probably got a few trophies on his shelves. Poor Michael. Yeah, what's Michael got? <laughs> no wonder he's like oh, he's just trying to come up with these new inventions. He's just something is going to get him an award. One of maybe these he's going to get best T-shirt design at the Northwest Fashion Awards. Yeah, maybe. Because um, they have that, don't they? That's where um they go colour in that. Yeah, yeah, they do every year. That one time. Yeah. When they have, <laughs> when they have year, a mini bus crash. <laughs> um, yeah, and Ronnie is obviously the the buffest man in Weatherfield. He's a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. And Ed has flashing what? tape. <laughs> You're not having it. The flashest flashing tape in Weatherfield. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so she's got an award and um, isn't that wonderful? So, Alia phones the well, group no, for later. No, she just encourages Alia, doesn't she? She says... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The story Sorry. Was sort, it sounded like it was going to go, I... I, um, I, uh, I stood up to someone and I was rewarded for it. went wrong, it. So but maybe, actually, it was, no, it went right this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you stand up to Griff, maybe you'll get an award or something as well. Maybe, so do you think, maybe a soap award, eh? eh? Do you think Next there's a, like, year, check a trade? Schofield. Do you think check a trade, like, gives somebody an award every year for the most annoying feedback for somebody. You know on check you know Chucky yeah. Trade. Yeah. Do you mm-hmm. think there's an award every year for like the most negative feedback about somebody's work? And Alia could possibly win that Definitely. for saying that Griff's a racist. Yes, I think so, I think so. So she phones up Arnie the roofer, who's the guy that was having a you know, having fun he's, with he's, Tracy the other week. He's basically hired Griff as a contractor a to come and do some kind of flashing tape. I don't, I don't really know what but that Griff, is. Griff didn't turn up with the flashing tape, so I think he yeah. should get fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maria comes along. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, she phones up the boss and says, Yo, did you know that Griff's a racist? Then Maria comes along and says, Hey, guess what? Maria, um, uh, Alia, the council loved the idea of the refugee sales stall, but they're still not going to touch it till next year because it's too much of a risk. So, Griff, we then cut to a nice atmospheric rainy scene of him and his van on the phone to Arnie later, saying, oh no, this is a load of rubbish, don't you listen to them? And then, you know, within seconds he's told Arnie to shove his job. And then he puts down the phone and calls up Spider and says, right, we need to get the guys together in Victoria Gardens, we've got, we've got a job to do. Um, 
And it was, I think that's what he said. Or maybe he just said Spider come to Victoria. I don't really know. Because what happens is that Alia is in the law offices later, isn't she? Her new place of work, remember? She's a she's a new lady of law with Dee Dee. We haven't seen any of it, but she is. And um, yeah, she's there just finishing off her jobs. And then Griff sneaks up no, on she her. Looks, she admires the award. She is admiring Dee Dee's award, yes, that has appeared on the desk. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he he, uh, he he pushes some paperwork off the table because he's so mean. Sorry, and he sits down and he sees Dee Dee's award and he's like, oh yeah, it's nice they create these new categories so your lot get a bit of bling. Um, he's, he is actually, I thought in that scene, getting quite intimidating. Well, yeah, because he's like, why are you here by yourself yeah. with this girl? In a darkened room. What are you room? doing? Why are yeah. you here? And, and, and Alia, she's... She's, back yeah, she's, 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 she's not my favourite character, but she, she has been doing a pretty good job of trying to stand up to these I guys. I think she's very brave. She's, do, she's doing a lot more than most people would do. Yeah, yeah, she is. Um, and then, um, but then before, you know, he can, he can do anything, Spider kind of blunders up. Well, you know, he's pretending to blunder up to say, oh, what are we doing, boss? And um, Griff's like, I, thought, hey, I was just about to do some really serious, hardcore intimidating of Alia here and you kind of ruin the atmosphere, you clown. But two people more intimidating than one. Yeah. Um, no, he, he kind of heads off but then before um, saying to Alia, you cost me money, so you owe me. I'll see you soon, yeah? So Alia and goes... he's got this really kind of sinister, fake, friendly yeah. demeanour, doesn't he? Like, I think he's doing a good job of being good. a, a scary good. baddie. I like him yeah. in a, in a like-to-hate way. So Alia goes back to speed dial, very shaken, girl. and um, and Yasmin just, just tries to chivvy her up and chivvy her on and say, "Well, you know, you can come and help me and unload the van later. We'll keep you busy." And so um, they're kind of that. There's a van parked outside speed dial, wasn't there? And mm -hmm. Alia and Yasmin were going in and out with boxes, and and Griff and the racists were doing their best, intimidating. Fact, they're going, Rrr, they're giving her evils from across the street. Apart from Spider, who's just there going, "Oh, is it time that I?" Oh, I stopped being when a are we going to do the big job so I can leave? Yeah, that, thank goodness by Friday uh, it looks like things are, the wheels more, yeah. are turning there. So Alia goes up to Griff and she's like, you can't oh, win hang on, this, no. Griff. Th at this point everyone's gone and it's just her yeah. and Griff. Oh yeah, yeah, that's Griff's right. Griff's sitting right. down and she goes up to him and starts yeah, having so a go you can't him. win. And then he kind of does a bit more goading for her and then she turns <laughs> away and actually probably moment of the week and definitely an, an, ex an unexpected one yeah, for me. Yeah. She does this amazing backwards she's elbow like, hey, yeah! crack into the face. That was a good one, Alia. Can well I done. Say, I didn't see that coming. That was the fanciest fight move we've seen on Coronation Street for a good 10 years. It was great. It yeah. was over very quickly, but it came out and she'd have got me. I tell you, I yeah. wouldn't have been able to dodge that Crack bullet. right in the nose. Yeah. And um, he kind of, she should walks off and she's like, oh, she, I she just ruins hurt. it by running off like okay. a scared oh, little sorry. mouse. She should have gone, yeah, there's more of that. More of that Leave came me alone. From. She knows that she's now you know, assaulted someone basically. So she kind of, she hobbles off down the cobbles, rubbing her elbow. And, she, <laughs> yeah, and then he, he jumps on the chance to make things look a lot worse. He kind of, he's got a bit of blood on his face. She really does a number on him, doesn't she? she? Just with a swift, swift elbowing. He's got but he rubs it in to nose, make it worse. He's got his lip, yeah, yeah, yeah. his ear. And so he, he rubs it all over his face and then he films a selfie video saying, I've just been jumped by four Muslim men. Um, the, I, you know, the bar streets aren't safe, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, and then uploads it onto no, his... No, he doesn't upload it, yeah. He just saves it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's two uploads to social media, isn't it? Yeah. He's saved it, yeah. Um, and I can't remember whether it was after... I think it was after this episode had finished. We kind of both turned to each other and said, it's going to go viral. It's going to go <laughs> it's viral. It's a video that's been filmed on Coronation Street. It's going to go viral. All right, and I also said maybe it'll show up on EastEnders as well. Like Could that, do. Like that fight between Maria and Tracy last year. If um, only we could get a viral video because we've have we got six thousand likes or anything I don't, probably maybe we one don't thing. have six thousand likes on anything I have to oh, say yeah. no we need Alia to punch us in the or face I bet she would be anything. quite happy too <laughs> yeah our um, our words with friends com her Coronation Street oh, yeah. game video is our best video on our YouTube channel What's that's that got, got like ten thousand likes oh so. that's good not likes views, views sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Well, if Griff wants to get more views, he just mm. needs to play that well, game. That, that Charlie Jordan one we did recently, that's like our third best performing video ever on our YouTube channel now. So Tell thank you, you very much, Charlie Jordan fans. If they want something new, what? should watch our quiz that we did with um, 
Ellie Mulvaney, yes. Oh, yes, we didn't even mention that at the beginning of the episode, did we? I uploaded a video nice, of me and Ellie. Fun quiz game. That's got a couple of hundred Ken. views, I think, so far. Ken's loves and losses. Because if your internet slowed down, it's because of the storm of people that have gone towards that. Sorry. For anyway, you. no, that was good. I, I, I spent a bit of time on Sunday morning making some editing, and I put editing, some little yeah. pictures and little dings when she got one right as well. Yeah, so go and watch that proper, if you haven't. Yeah, it's video. It's That's a whole like one of my most video. produced things I've ever put on the yeah. channel. Anyway. Oh. I digress. It took four hours, that did. It really did. So, um, Alia is looking jumpy on Friday's episode as she comes down the stairs wearing a very nice green outfit, I have to say. It looked good on her. Um, Stu spots that she's got a bit of a dodgy elbow, a bit of a bruise there, and Yasmin's like, what are you hiding from me, my girl? So later on, the Christmas out. market is in full swing and, and Griff's there looking dodgy as per usual. Alia, by this point, has confessed to Yasmin and Stu what she <clears> did last night with the whole elbowing of Griff in the face. Griff's only turned up because it's called the Christmas Market, not the Winter Market. And was it actually called that? Better be. That's otherwise what I'm, I'm calling gonna, it. Otherwise, I'm going to complain. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Max and Lauren find Griff in Victoria Gardens later. Yeah, because Max has, had been kind of strangely absent from the storyline this week until Friday. But now that a video has been uh, posted, it's it's all the balls in Max's court, isn't it? He's going to do his magic with that. So um, Griff's kind of laying on very thick about these these Muslim guys that supposedly beat him up the previous evening. And he says, right, you know what? It's time for the for ordinary decent folk like us to fight back. I've got a job for you, Max. You're going to help me make sure that nobody is terrorised by that sort ever again. Mm. Right. So, also entering the storyline this week, the Alahans. So, Dev, yeah. newly bearded. And Ardy newly bearded. So, but yes, they're having a go at doing a beard, they, Ardy, It just looked like they? they both lost their razors. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe they were late to, late to work that day. They're maybe just... they were doing a, right. a different version of Movember, but it's... Beard yeah. December. I think that Dev's just realised that everyone's grown a beard now. Billy's got a beard, David's got a beard, Keep Daniel's got a warm. beard. Yeah. Why don't you grow a beard? I don't know. I don't, I don't want a beard. I really, really wish you would. I'm I want not to see it. growing a beard. Please. No. I wouldn't look, look, look dashing like Please. Dev. I just look silly. Before I die. Maybe before you die. Okay. And then we'll get a dog. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the Allahans come to speed dial and Yasmin and Stu tell them all about their latest run in with the racists. And um, they don't say exactly what happened because they don't want to get Alia looking... Uh, in trouble. It, it, they're not in trouble. But Alia's kind of looking kind of panicked like... You know, she's going to get... Maybe this is for, just me, but if I if I elbowed a horrible racist in the face, I would tell everybody... Uh, Guys, guess uh, would, what I did. Guess what I elbowed I would be so night. excited to tell everybody, especially considering that... I know that she's just got this new job, Badidi, and she probably wouldn't be able to carry on doing that if it came out, because I would imagine that it would bring disrepute on the company. Mm. But she could certainly go back to working for her gran. Mm. Well, you know what? She's very secure. Alia knows what happens when you mm. punch a racist, because when Luke punched a racist, he ended up having to go to court for that, didn't he? Oh, and then she he ain't died. Got time to... Yeah, exactly. Then he got shot by Pat Phelan. So Alia does not want to go to court and then get shot she's by Pat worried. Phelan, so she okay, wants to keep point. it on the down low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Don't tell everybody. Keep the story okay, cool. that it was actually or the one that's Griff men. saying. So, yeah, because that's I suppose it's better, difficult. Yeah, she's kind of saying, well, I, I, don't, I don't want people to know it's me, but I also don't want him to spread this false story. Sorry, but, but I, I really honestly think that if they don't have this reveal next week, if Ali doesn't come out and say, it wasn't four men, it was me, and I'm little, and he's a big coward. I know. It, it, it was, it's such an easy win, isn't it? Like, how stupid would Griff look? Yeah, if he was beaten up by a girl, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's like when Maddie punched him. Do you remember that time when she? And then she got blown up. See, don't uh, want doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so back at the flat, Max shows Griff this video he's been working on. So the project that Griff set him was to do a bit of fancy pants video editing. Well, it looks like he's he's filmed an entire new story arc. Well, it it the the video it was I I um. I didn't like it. I it looked too professional. Audience. No, no, it looked too professional for Max. Because what we've seen Max so. do so far, but especially like the, the the video that he released of the community centre tour the other week, was looked fairly amateur. But this, which was basically Lauren running up and down the ginnel, looking scared and kind of hiding around <laughs> corners as if to su suggest oh no, that she's being for chased me next. by Muslims. Um, it was. It just looked a bit too kind of filmic and professional for no, Max. No, I thought it was and then it, and it then was it, cheesy. It rem tell you what it reminded me of that that um, that trailer that Coronation Street did when Callum was after the Platts. Do you remember when 
David and Kylie and Sarah Lou are racing through all the ginnels and the houses and everything, and and Callum's chasing after them, and then they yeah, they stop and, the, and there's oh, a yeah, there's, there's a big the pit in, in 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 Rosamond Street. Yeah, it reminded me just like that. I I just think it was too arty for him. But anyway, no, I thought it was good because it felt very student filmy to me. Maybe, and it was very. I thought I thought it was clumsy and and kind of a bit hyperbolic and and silly. But well, the whole thing still whole came point, off as am amateurish yeah it was a mixture because like the very final screen which says take action now make our country safe again that looked a bit cheap and rubbish well it also doesn't explain what the action is no exactly exactly it's it's uh, down to the, I guess the viewers it, I imagination guess they kind of, yeah like you you know what to do yeah you know what we can't say mm -hmm, it but yeah. you know so griff tells him this is genius and this is one thing that griff has been doing all this time every time max tries something that's for their cause whatever it is griff says oh well done you're so smart max oh we're so glad we've got you all part of this grooming process to, to win him over to their side or to oh, keep yeah. him on their side and he's like yeah you upload that straight away that lot want a war they've got one mm. so um alia sees this video later and she's tagged speed dial in it and we get he to, has he's yes yeah, so <laughs> she didn't do Ali's it like i'm gonna <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. It was me. Get some more views. Yeah. Although I, I did take down some um, inf uh, some details about um, Speed Dolls. It wasn't Twitter, was it? It was the Weatherfield version Friends of Connect. it. It was Friends Connect. No, no, it wasn't Friends Connect. Yes, it was. was Friends it? Space. I didn't think it was. They had it on the banner, on their Speed Doll banner. Oh, yeah. They, they had that... a little Friend Connect. Dot. Yeah, but I didn't know whether the app that we saw was right. It doesn't why matter would it, anyway. Why would they have two of the same thing I don't know but anyway Speed Dial has got 2,000 followers that's quite good for a local this, small it? restaurant yeah but they're only following 122 well, people well that's good to see you've got to keep your ratio like that otherwise yeah. it is that's what, our, that's what our Twitter's like you've got to be careful because if you if you follow too many people it just makes it look like you're follow for follow yeah, that's yeah you, don't, you don't want that yeah so um, anyway so she's found this on the on the internet uh, meanwhile Max and Co are celebrating how and here we go the video has Gone viral, ding, 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 and they ding, literally ding, say ding. gone viral. I let out a big cheer when they Hooray. said that. Yay, gone viral alert! So Max says the streets aren't safe. So he is kind of now totally just parroting, parroting back. back the rhetoric that Griff's been feeding to him. What does he say? What he says? He says, "Yeah, the streets aren't safe. They need to, we need to take our country back." Yes. And Griff's like, oh, "I'm dead proud of you, son." Hooray. Spider is there I looking mean, no. a bit worried, which is just Spider's thing he does this week. So um, Yasmin is kind of has a go at Alia later for causing this. Um, and later on, we have Ardy, who's been intimidated by some video watching ruffians on the bus. And they've, they've gone up to him. He saw that they were watching some video. He doesn't know what the video is at this point. And um, he, he says, yeah, people came up to me and said, Muslims like me need to uh, oh, destroy the country. And, and Alia is there because this is in the shot that this is all happening. He's telling Deb and she's there looking guilty. Um, and she... This is when she goes outside and she and, and I think the next scene was filmed by Max because that's that's a very arty scene. Do you remember when she came out of the shop and, and it looked like everyone oh, was getting you don't her? Like that though, do you? I, I'm not a big fan of that, no. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm just going to put that one down to guest edited by Max there and, and say no more about it. So at the market later, Asha tells Dev and Ardy about this video and this is why these people um, uh, attacked him. And, and of course, when... When Ardi said this to Dev, Dev had to remind the viewers, but you're not even Muslim because the Alahams, of course, are a Hindu family. So I don't know how much they're practising these days. And um, Ali, so anyway, Ali is saying to the Alahams, yeah, it's all my fault that the lads turned on you. Dev's very understanding of, of, of this. And um, so Ali says, oh, cheers for being so understanding. Please can you look after the stall because I just need to go and have a word with Max because he's just kind of strolled past the stall. Well, she thinks she can talk to him. Yeah, yeah, but it takes a little bit more persuading because Ardi, Ardi goes to speed dial later, doesn't he? Because he wants Yasmin to look after the stall because Ardi ha hasn't come back. No, there was a running joke because they What's had that? all this extra mints, so they made some kima curry. Yeah. And then Dev was like, oh, no way, I love that stuff, but the last time I had it, it went straight through me. Mm. And then they had the special and he came to the stall and he said, oh, I'm going to have some anyway. And then Ardy comes later and says, can you please come and take the stand because my dad's sick. I missed that completely. <laughs> I, I was taking was, my notes. Then. I thought it was I do funny. like that actually then. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So where Alia actually is, is at Platt's house. See, I thought that when Max was walking through the market, he was heading he was up towards the, the co-op way. way. And they've obviously done a big old loop round. Strawberry laces or something. Yeah. And um, so they're back at number eight <laughs> now. 
and Ali is at the door saying, look, you need to wake up and see what's happening to you. You are, he didn't, she doesn't say this, but well, she, she kind tells of him that he's under Griff's spell. Well, she and, says, I'm the one that clocked him on the head, on the face. Yeah, yeah. He, he says, look, you're going to be as bad as him if you keep this up. You're going to be a massive racist. And Max says, Griff's not racist, you are. Um, back at the flat, Griff's talking to Spider. And but he this... doesn't explain why he thinks that. Well, he's kind of saying, you know, no, you're I have against the, I can, white I can people, logically, I can logically extrapolate. Mm. But it would have been nice for him to have explained his thought process. I don't think it is. Beyond no you. I don't think he's got a thought process. That's I think the thing. They do. He's... No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That racists do have a thought process. No, I think a lot of them and do. If but you, if you pretend that they don't, you're never going to be able to get on top of it or be able to change people's minds. If you just write everybody off and say, "Oh, you're just a racist," you think they're saying everything. And I understand that is a very powerful. Um, and logical, well, you know, emotionally makes sense. I feel the same way, but you can't, you never defeat racism by just saying there's literally no, you're, you're just an empty vessel for racism. No, no, I'm just saying that Max at the moment, I don't think that he's got any really deep rooted reasons for why he's saying these things. He's no, but been, he's got vague he's ideas and he doesn't it. really, he, he's not really put, he's, I, I see what you're saying. But he knows that the, he's got their rhetoric down, hasn't he? Yeah. They, you, you know, you're you lot coming over here. You don't appreciate our culture. You're beating people up because that we're not Muslim. Hmm. Yeah. No. No. I get it. Um. So anyway, um. Griff is telling Spider. Yeah. It's time we step things up a notch. Oh, here we go. Time for something big because there's a race war coming and we've got to be ready. Mm. So, um, sounds like there's going to be maybe something big, I'm going to say a Christmas big thing. Oh, I, I love so. I love that for Christmas. I hope so. I, I'm, I'm glad things are, are moving on a little bit there because um, I did, a bit like what I was saying last week in Coronation Street, this story, even though it wasn't, it still felt like it was spinning its wheels a little bit. Things happened... Alia and Maria getting involved more, the, 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 the newspaper stuff with Maria. But I'm just, I've been wanting and waiting for weeks to know what are they planning? I'm like really on tenterhooks know, to know, know, oh, are they going to do but something? I don't want it to come at Christmas, I was being sarcastic. Are they going to do something? Sometimes I say things and I, I worry that people take what I say on face value, but <laughs> you can't don't, really. They just don't believe anything we say. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what this is and, and hopefully this is when the whole, the truth about Spider being a policeman coming out is going to be and everything. Because I, I think that the well, real casualty of this storyline at the moment is Spider He's really just kind of lurking at the background, looking worried, isn't he? He's he's barely even got had any lines this week. I get that he's feeling uncomfortable with being around these people. I, I, I don't know what more I'd want him to do, but are, are you feeling that's the same thing? That Spider's a bit superfluous, but he kind of has to be there because it's important that his character is there? Yeah, I see what you're saying. He's got to... He's like, yeah, but... Yeah. And there's and there's all the stuff with Toya, like Toya's not been in it this week, and I know he's not going out with Toya or anything anymore. I the other thing that I'm still finding a bit peculiar about this storyline mm. is that there are still people that are willing to give both Griff and Spider and Reese and everyone the time of day. People are still discovering that they're massive racists. Surely I would have thought that in such a tight-knit community of Coronation Street, where everyone's got each other's mobile phone numbers plugged into their phone, <laughs> the word would have spread by this point. Don't have anything to do with them. Why hasn't Spider and everything been given the heave-ho? Why, you know? It took a little while for Jenny to ban them from the pub. Ed didn't appear to know anything about Griff. It's... It's peculiar in, in a street it's of gossip. It's its way through slowly, I guess. Yeah, but gossip spreads like wildfire well, usually on the street. It's it's a just. Well, I don't think that's part of the story yet. Yeah, no, it's not. But... I like I liked how Roy reacted to Spider, where he was basically saying, yeah, to him, "You're not this way. person." Yeah, I enjoyed that. And actually. I'm gonna that that. not treat you badly because of your belief systems, but I don't approve of you. Mm. Yeah. Which I thought was really powerful. That's exactly what I'm trying to get at when I'm talking about. Mm. about people who hold these beliefs yeah the other thing um that's a bit not sitting completely right with me with the whole people knowing that he's a racist or not is 
I don't really know whether Griff wants people to know he's racist. I know, it's just, that's, that's kind of inconsistent, isn't it? Because he was at the community centre <laughs> yeah. making a very thinly veiled racist uh, tirade yeah. the other week, wasn't he? Saying, you know, all these people come into our country and they're taking our jobs and they're just as bad as these evading crayfish. And, and when like, you turn the taps on, they all come out. It was very obviously him saying, this is what, what I think. Yet at the same time, he doesn't want his boss to find out. And if you don't want your must... boss to find out and sack you, mm. then don't go up into a public place and, and, and say, get on the podium and say all these things. You can't tell me there's no racist roofers in Weatherfield he could work for. Yeah, I bet there are. I bet there are. So that it's just a little bit inconsistent there. And, and even like the fact that Arnie only decided now to involve his boss. There, there are some things that characters are doing in this storyline this week that there is obviously a trigger in the storyline, but I'm thinking, why didn't they do it before? Why hasn't Alia reported Griff to people? She's literally, she's literally council culture. She's the councillor. Why? Why? Arlia, isn't she going around... I, I can't remember. They, they, they might. They might have just said that Griff had only just signed up to work with Arnie, but she she should be spreading the word to everybody. And and like when Griff decided to um, post that video saying, "Oh, I've been beaten up by four Muslim men." Why did it take Alia elbowing in the face to do that? He could have just, you know, that's what I thought. Punched himself or something. Because it wasn't four Muslim men. And also, why didn't he just say it was Alia? Yeah. It's like, oh, you know... Well, you... probably because he doesn't want people knowing that he got beaten no, up by a girl, like you, you said. Spin but... it how... He could have spun it any way. He could have gone, I just told... I was being polite to her and she took something I said the wrong way because you know these people, they do that, don't they? Mm. Everyone knows what I mean. And then she smacked me in the face and I wouldn't hit her back because I'm a gentleman and she's just a little girl. But this is what they're like. They're vicious and they're horrible. And if you say one word they don't like, they'll they'll turn on you. Yeah, that could have also... That could have been pretend- so easily yeah. turned into the same... Could have potentially as well and turned a bit gone, of business away from speed dial. He could have also said, what if I, you know, what if I was a girl? What if she was a bloke? What if it was a gang of four guys? Mm. You see them, you see them walking around together. They all hang out together. What if they all turned on you? Yeah. So it, I'm not you saying know, it doesn't make so sense these things but just when they're happening i'm thinking well why is it taking well, I'm wondering so long for this to happen whether there will be a revelation that it was earlier that punched him in the face which would be quite funny to watch him squirm yeah no i, I think that probably will i hope that happens. Right. i hope that happens. i love so. that alia did that she's oh she's so plucky i really you get hope... a point for that one alia. thing i'm worried about is that she's going to get downtrodden by this because how relentless is he being to her mm. i couldn't cope with this yeah. he's she's constantly being surveilled and and threatened mm. In her own home by this man. He's not even he's not from round there. You're gonna start that <laughs> business. She's been there longer than he has, thank very you true. very much. Very true. Um yeah. They I, also brought up briefly about Cal, her dad who served in the military. Oh yeah, yeah. There's so much that happened. That Interestingly I also, down. Gary did too, so I wonder if that will come up. Mm, mm. Because Stu's not the only person who's no. and I mean Peter did too. There's yeah. lots of people on the street who served in the army or the navy you might have a problem with somebody pretending that they did yeah yeah especially if he's trying to misrepresent his service as some kind of anti-muslim like oh i know what they're like you know because mm. they can be like well i was there you weren't yeah yeah um i imagine that they're all uh, just as there are racist roofers there are probably one or two racist people in the army as well so when Ali was saying, oh, you're besmirching our great military, I was thinking, well, in fact, I, I did a little Google search and, and it's very easy to quickly find articles that talk about um, people, people who've been in the army and were, were made fun of or, or accused, accused or whatever because of the colour of their skin. So. Well, it would have been an interesting, because Alia's response was, oh, I can't imagine what it was like for dad having people like, like Griff, mm. you know, having to protect him or having to trust these people that you know were stabbing the back yeah yeah that, that i enjoyed that but I, I i think maybe one of the... but really i would have if i was earlier i would have said what, what what were they treating him like not necessarily or oh, he was his life was in danger because chris is racist it's more like how how were they talking about my dad how was he treated was he bullied mm. was he singled out yeah yeah i think well, when, with Alia and Maria's involvement, that's just making this storyline not as exciting for me as it had been before. I'm glad that Max came back into this on Friday because he's he's really the one that I'm most fascinated by in, in this. Yeah, but Him and you Spider. need somebody and, for them to fight against. Yeah, I know, but it just and but because it's Alia and Maria who <laughs> aren't really fan favorite characters of mine, it it almost rem- and uh, okay, it sounds it sounds terrible, doesn't it? But sometimes I'm like, be going, careful. Yeah. No, no, I know. <laughs> 
It's funny because when like Pat Phelan was going up shooting up everyone, we're going, yeah, Pat Phelan, he's amazing, <laughs> best villain ever, go yeah. Pat, team Pat. Yeah. It feels kind of wrong to say that about Griff, doesn't well, it? Well, it is wrong. Well, it's wrong to say it about a murderer as well, but I suppose because... Yeah, but he wasn't a discrimination, <laughs> discriminatory murderer, yeah, even no, just, opportunities. Anyone that got in his way. I suppose that it was the fact that Pat being a murderer... Not that there aren't murderers in real life, obviously, was a little bit more. It's but more fantastical. Fantastical. And Whereas panto racism and... is sadly very humdrum and every day, isn't it? Yeah, that that's the thing. It is something that people and experience people, every people, day. People, you know, yeah. Yeah, but but I mean, it just it just goes to say what a great job. Griff that is the, very the actor charismatic. Michael, whatever his name is, playing Griff is is doing. I, I think he's doing a great job actually. Yeah, um, you can see why people like Max is kind of. Yeah. On, hanging on his every word mm. but yeah it, it reminds me a little bit of when yeah when Pat was harassing Anna Windass and we were clearly <laughs> supposed Shut to be like oh, poor, poor Anna Windass so we're like, yeah, you, you, tell, you tell her Pat <laughs> but no I absolutely hope that Griff will get what's coming to him which he clearly will well, I want will to see I want to see end. what his evil plans are I know I really want to see what his evil plans but are but I really don't want good. it to be a, Chris, a Christmas race for well it feels like it's happening soon Gemma and Christmas is mere weeks away I have to warn you this. It's not very festive. And yeah. um, the other thing that I thought was interesting with this was um that little scene we had with Spider and Reese, was it? Where Reese was saying, Have you ever thought of breaking away? And you know, I don't like the fact that Griff's the big boss and people only know who I am when I'm with Griff and everything. So is that potentially gonna Oh, I thought know, he was is... talking about being on the show. No. <laughs> He's is he gonna like, you know, decide he doesn't want to get involved in this this big scheme that whatever Griff's doing and he's gonna let him down. Oh, I something? wonder actually no. I wonder whether there's going to be two plans. You know, is Griff going to say, let's do this? And then Reese will be like, that's not good enough. We've got to do this and this. Yeah. So, or is he going to be like, no, I'm taking charge? Yeah, I was, I was quite interested in there being a, maybe a potential coup in, the, in, in Race's HQ. Um, and also that that's obviously going to cause a bit of drama for Max and Lauren because they're fairly inseparable at the moment. With Lauren being Reese's daughter, mm. Max is going to oh. be siding with Griff. Oh dear. Lauren will side oh, it's with just her like dad. And Juliet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that that's what I think is possibly going to happen there because I don't think they would have laid those breadcrumbs if it wasn't going to lead to something. Because yeah. he, well, he, it's kind of done for a joke, isn't it? Because he says to Spider, "Would you, would you join my side if I break away from Griff?" And Spider's like, "No." <laughs> Well, no, yeah, it depends. Well, yeah, um, it depends on how much of a good crime you're going to do. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, anything else with this one? What, I think. Are, what? You, are you glad that Max is back in it? Were you kind yeah. of hankering for him? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, any. I'm fine. I'm finding it a you... bit hollow at the moment. In what sense? I just think. I feel I feel like Coronation Street can't go as far as it needs to for some of this, and I appreciate that they can't, and I I don't necessarily want it to be that kind of show, but I just feel like there's a lot of important stuff that you can't cover on Coronation Street, and a lot of things they can't say. It's feeling know? a bit free watershed, isn't it? And I don't really want Coronation Street to turn into a hard hitting, you know. Mm. 9 p.m. crime show about because I wouldn't watch that if there was like oh there's a really great crime show about a gang of racists I would go oh, well rush to record that yeah but you were also saying when we were talking about it last night that um that that, that it's very kind of black and white if you pardon the pun and um with with <laughs> Alia <laughs> with Ali no you didn't say that with Alia being so seeing to be do no wrong I didn't say oh and she did do something I don't wrong. remember she, saying she, uh, that in the face but. It seems like it's... I don't remember saying that. I don't remember. What did I say? Well, you were saying things like Alia's being a bit of an angel and, um, you know, we're, we're, maybe she would be saying horrible things back to him or... Th I, I don't know, I can't remember. Well, I think that they're being... I think it feels like they're... There are people that are good. <laughs> <laughs> in real life but I also think that you might fight a bit more dirty I don't know yeah but, but you know one thing that you could definitely say and um, it would be interesting if they went down this route and I think this is probably what they are doing is by saying we can't put a foot wrong here because if we do anything wrong then we're going to get blamed for it twice as hard that's why the thing with Alia hitting him in the face is a big deal actually mm. because um, it's only going to embolden 
other racists to say, well, you hit him, he didn't do anything yeah. to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they have to be more, they have to be more perfect in, in a sense. Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. Because okay. they're being judged twice as ba- twice as hard. Just before we move on, um, do you want to say something a little bit about Zakat? Because you did a bit, because that well, was I just brought thought, up, didn't, well, wasn't yeah. it, by Alia? Saying, I, knew, oh, I didn't know what the word for it no, was. No, she said, well, maybe this stool can be part of our Zakat. No, it can't be. You've got to do your own stuff. What is Zakat, Gemma, <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know? It's their duty. It's, a, it's one of the pillars of Islam, isn't it? Duty for all Muslims. They have to contribute a certain amount of their wealth. So not just to have your income, like a tithe, like a Christian church, where you sort of give 10% of your money. Mm. You have to give 2.5% of your total savings and wealth in the lunar year. Well, that's kind of like a benchmark. I don't think yeah. it's a set in stone. You can give more if you like. Well, no, I don't. Th- I think in different countries it's different depending on you know your belief system and the, and the question is does it count if you're taking money from other people no, to doesn't. give us your zakat which is <laughs> what Alia was maybe thought, suggesting no, I to thought Yasmin, it was Yasmin. I thought Yasmin was being a bit cheeky there I thought it was, I thought I thought it was Yasmin I thought it was Yasmin she's like remember. I think we could use this no you can't we can say it comes from us no. this is part of our 2.5% of our total wealth wouldn't it be part of like your 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 ser- acts of service rather yeah. than your money the, the financial contribution <laughs> she's like she's yeah we are doing something it and off trying to raise money from charity for charity yeah well yeah it's good okay okay so right Stephen Reed then Gemma oh good what's Stephen it, this is this, I can get behind this Stephen. I can say things about Stephen can't I yeah he's, so a a, he's another villain yeah so on Monday he's he's a proper he's a definitely a, a, on the comic side of villainy. Uh, Gail's boggling six fellas and she finds out it's a pizza place in Bolton yes because she at the end of last she week's got, episode she got that phone call didn't she so right let's remind ourselves last week he got a job as a delivery driver for six fellas and then he crashed his moped and now and then they phoned him up to moan at him about yeah, so it yeah so he's trashed the bike and he, his stuff got stolen yeah, and Gail was the one that received Gail that got phone the phone call. call and now she's wondering what the hell is this so she, she boggles it and finds out that it's a pizza place um, Sarah and Michael come round and they're asking for money. They want Stephen to give them money for their business, and mm. uh, they also want him to look at the pitch. And Gaz, like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know where he is. Elaine and Stephen come back to the street because the reason Stephen left his phone at Gail's house and he stayed the night in Bolton with Elaine. Well, no, he left the phone on the bench, didn't he? But Adam found okay, it very handy gave it on back the bench. To... Yeah. So Elaine and Stephen return to the street. Um, she he she let him stay over because he hurt his arm and um he's he's like he's now got his sights set on her because she's gonna sell her house and he's gonna fleece her for as much as he can get away with oh and one thing that we might as well say now is that last week we accused him of trying to kill audrey oh yeah i have written a note later to mention that but uh, yeah we quite a lot of people pointed out that maybe he was just trying to make her look drunk yeah, because he was very keen for Nick to come and join them in the pub. So he was putting these sleeping, uh, not sleeping, uh, antidepressants crushed up yeah. in her drink just to wooze her up a I little I don't bit. know what the effect antidepressants have on people, so I didn't put that together. No, it seems very obvious now. We, it's had been pointed out. <laughs> yet, so. Sorry for that, Ralph. We're probably for... wrong about some of the other things we've ranted about this week as Sorry well. Sorry to um, Half of the course. put a slur on your head, Stephen, and accuse <laughs> you of matricide. It's just because we're so desperate for him to kill somebody else. We're just yeah. so determined. It's like, he's going to kill again. safe. So he's, yeah, he's, he's trying to date her so he can get his hands on her cash. And Tim's watching, and he's not very happy about this. Stephen says, don't tell anybody about me staying over because it's all a bit embarrassing and I don't want people to know I fell off a, a moped. Then he's in the cafe and Shona asks him about his arm and he says, oh, I, I just hurt it. And she says, what, really? It just looks really bad. Um, and she doesn't push further, but she's like, oh, Elaine and Stephen. <laughs> yeah, she was great this week, wasn't she? She, was, she was a bit like she was with uh, Max and Lauren when they were first um, <gasps> Love Lauren. dancing around each yeah, she's other. Brilliant. Sarah and Michael find Stephen in the cafe and ask him about his arm and he uh, changes the subject and uh, they t- talk to him about their pitch and he's like, wow, so amazing. You don't need me. You can get investment from somewhere, someone else, anyone else, just not me. I believe in you. And they said, oh, uh, Sarah goes, oh, my mum's looking for you and she's in a bad mood. If I was Stephen, I'd be like, I don't know who Gail thinks she is, but she can do one. <laughs> she's my sister. I don't care if she's in a bad mood. What's she going to do? She's not, she's not my mum. And even my mum, what's she going to do? Nothing. She's going to she's gonna flutter her eyelids at you, Stephen. You just wait. Elaine's with Sally later and Tim comes in and he gives her a bit of a tease about being with Stephen. And Sally's like, ooh, how interesting. And Elaine's like, no, 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 we're just friends, I promise. We're just enjoying each other's company. So, 
he goes to Gail's house, Stephen does, and he's lying about um, his arm and where he was and what happened. And Gail's very suspicious. And then she confronts him about the phone call from six fellas and says, well, it's a very odd, odd conversation. And from what I gathered, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were working as a delivery boy in Bolton. Was it by this point that he'd said that he got his arm broken when a moped crashed into it? Or does that come He later? was saying, well... I can't remember. Well, he says that now. Saying, yeah, he says, yeah. Um, look, I wanted to invest in one of the businesses. So I thought I would oh, yeah. go and talk to one of the owners. And then they crashed the car, into, the moped into me, actually. Why would I work as a delivery boy? And then Audrey comes down and she's like, ha, 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 why would Stephen work as a delivery boy? He's rich. <laughs> Sarah Lee comes in and she's like, oh no, this pitch went terribly. I just got all tongue-tied. How how did you screw this up, Sarah? You're supposed to be a businesswoman. Oh, like really? literally, she's so useless. Sorry, Sarah, but you are. Your whole point of being involved in this business is that Michael comes up with the ideas and the designs and you're supposed to be the business head and your only job, you screwed up. Yeah. If I was Michael, I'd say, sorry, I don't know what the point of you is. Business with you. You're not getting 50% of my profits because you're useless. I'd quite like to have seen um, that seed. It reminds me of The Apprentice. Just like, yeah. I just, I'd like to have seen that. You're right, it could have been an amazing Apprentice-style yeah. failed pitch. I'd also quite like to have seen Ardy being confronted by those people on the tram because it was another example of somebody coming in and describing a great There's scene a lot that of they were in. Where they do, they do that a lot of the time. We are being told a lot but, instead mm. of being shown Show, don't it. tell. So, um, so, so, Audrey's like, oh, you need money? Well... Stephen, yeah, she says, Stephen, why you... don't you give her the money instead of investing in this stupid pizza place that runs into people? He says, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to mix bit family and business. And Gail, Gail, I'll tell you what, if I was Stephen, I would have just crushed her in two. She keeps going, oh, you're rich. You could got £12,000. You should give her the money, Stephen. Why don't you give her the money? Oh. Gail's very free with other people's cash, isn't she? I know. Has she not got any left of her own? <laughs> This family just like passes the same bundle of cash from person to person. <laughs> Tim, Tim comes around and he talks to Stephen and he's like, what's your intentions with my mother? You better let me know if you're interested in her change. She's gone through a lot with Jeff and you don't, I don't want to see her hurt again. You better not be horrible. Yeah, this is where. And he's like, okay, was, was it here? Fine. Was this the time when Stephen finds out that she was the victim of coercive control? I guess it must have been. Hmm. Because he, he hasn't oh, done any of sneaky tricks up until no, this point, he's has he? inspired. He's like, yeah. oh, in coercive control, you say. Interesting. So a bit more badgering from the plat ladies. Stephen's like, okay, fine, I'll give you the £12,000. You know, I'd give them £12,000. Just shut up. They go inside and he kicks Gail's gnome. Yes, they were in the back garden when that happened, weren't they? I thought that was great. Nice Gail's gnome stupid gnome just kick it to bits. Yeah, victim number two. <laughs> Finally, he's a serial killer. <laughs> What was the, the what was the gnome's name? Um, it was Arthur in, in tribute to great Arthur the gnome belonging to Derek. Oh. Yeah. When Stephen sees Elaine in the cafe, he's he's like he's on the phone. He pretends he's on the phone to Gabriel. He's like, oh, I can. Oh no, you're so mean to me. <laughs> Stop abusing me and coercively controlling me. I wouldn't be there, Elaine. <laughs> I've got to go. I've got to go. Leave me alone, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh hi, I didn't see you there, um, Elaine. Just come over here. So Stephen and Elaine are in the pub later and he's telling her about all the stuff that Gabrielle said and oh she's so controlling, she won't let me do anything. She reminds me a bit of, of I don't know if you've heard of a man called Jeff, he's quite famous around these parts. <laughs> and she's like, oh, Jeff, yes I do know Jeff actually, he was my husband. Wow, what a coincidence, that's so weird. Is he the guy that got pecked to death? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, it's actually the same guy. Um, so Elaine obviously... Heart bleeds immediately. It's the same way that she did with Yasmin, wants to save him from mm. this horrible relationship because she's a nice person. And on Coronation Street, that makes you what? Target. A victim, correct. At the bar, <laughs> Elaine's looking all worried um, when Stephen and uh, Michael are talking about these designs because he's like, oh, it's so amazing. And she's like, oh, poor, poor group of people because his horrible wife won't give him £12,000 to invest in um, this wonderful business. Um, so I wonder what I could possibly do about that, she thinks. On Wednesday, Audrey... I've, I've just realised, actually, and, and, and we're quite, quite far into the podcast while I'm saying this, but we have been calling the days Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Oh, what are they then? When actually it's Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Sorry, everybody. Just well, it's more of a there. metaphorical Wednesday, isn't it? It was meant to be Wednesday when this if is If we happening. can all re just bear in mind that Wednesday just means the middle episode. Yes. 
Okay. I'm just going to carry on calling it Wednesday. I'm, I'm going to really try hard not to. Well, I'm not going to. I'm going to do my own thing, which is me doing it wrong, which is normally <laughs> how I do my own thing. That's how so, you roll, baby. Audrey is talking to Steve about Stephen. Elaine, Stephen, and he's like, what's going on? Is she trying to get your hands on her hands on your cash? And she, he says, no, 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 we're just friends, I promise you. He meets Elaine for coffee and cake at the cafe. And he, this is when he's stolen Audrey's phone. And me and you are like, oh, what's he doing? What's his plan? Well, I didn't even, well, oh. we weren't even sure for, straight away whether it was Audrey or Shona's phone. It was though. a very useful phone case. But good for you, Audrey. So Elaine's wittering on about selling her house. And she's like, oh, it's so amazing. I'm going to probably sell it between... Um, Christmas and New Year's Eve, and we're thinking, don't don't get excited about anything I, to do with houses. It's yeah. a miserable it, the, trudge. The, the, this moves, things move fast in Weatherfield, don't they? Selling um, property, apart, if you, if apart you, from um, uh, Fizz's and Tyrone's house. Yeah. Which, uh, so she's wittering on, and Stephen gets Audrey's, gets his phone, and he changes Audrey's name from Mum to Gabrielle, and then he says, "Oh, I've lost my phone. I lost my wallet, so I'll put my phone here." Here's my phone, don't look at my phone. Okay, Elaine, I'm gonna leave it face up and I'm not gonna lock it so you can see everything, but I prefer if you didn't look. And I'm gonna go look for my wallet. So he goes back to the to um, Gail's house and he starts to text his own phone using Audrey's phone so the messages appear as Elaine sitting there trying to mind her own business, but all these exciting and salacious <laughs> texts like, keep, keep coming up like, you are pathetic, I'm gonna coercively control you with my evil manipulation tactics. I'm gonna trap you in a magic box and everything. You're not gonna be allowed to let use our money. I'm not gonna let you invest in t-shirts. You know I hate them, they're too casual. <laughs> and she's like, oh, what a horrible bitch. Um, she obviously looks concerned, he comes back, and then Elaine says, oh, you've got some horrible messages on your phone. And he's myself. like, oh, she's such, a, she's so mean. Oh, Gabrielle, but she, she tells the truth. I am a failure. Oh, I feel really bad. I'm living with my mother. I'm 65 years old. Oh, it's so, I she won't give me any money. Oh, and Elaine's like, no, you're not a failure. You're very handsome. And Gabrielle's just gaslighting you. I read a book about it. I'm going to, um, I'm going to make sure everything's good. You're great. I'll see you later. And then he gets back to the cafe, changes the name round quickly, because um, Audrey's lost, but just looking for her phone, and he oh he just deletes everything and hides his tracks, doesn't he? Yeah. Stephen finds. Uh, yeah, because Audrey him. comes back and gets the phone back, doesn't she? And then she does a little practice phone call with Steve, with Stephen, because he says he found her phone outside, so she wants to check it's working. I think it was, and she, she phones him up, and it still comes up as Gabrielle's. So he's like, "Oh, nobody ever look at Oops. that." I thought I thought that that had been quite an interesting development, no, I like that. actually. If if he had forgotten, because I think you might do if you accidentally no, like renamed somebody in your phone book, yeah, and then you complete your plan, then you might forget to rename. Yeah, of course you it. would do, but he, so, that's what reminded him. Yeah, yeah, I know, but, but I no, th I like this because it shows you that he's a bit, he's on the ball, and he, he nearly there. got caught. Yeah, he nearly got caught, but I'd, I'd have liked to uh, anyway. If only he'd used his so. his clever brain for his business uh, dealings, he wouldn't have to have murdered Leo and. Just an accident. It's just an accident. Stephen talks to Tim in a pub and he says, I just want to be a friend to Elaine. And Tim says to Gemma that Elaine likes him. Later on, Elaine finds Stephen in the pub and he says, she says to him, right, I'm going to confess to you here. Did you know that I used to be in a controlling relationship? What? Oh my God, that me Jeff too was snap. horrible. And I'm going to give you £12,000 for Sarah's business as soon as the house sales go through, which will definitely be at any point at the moment yeah and he's like no I just I bundling didn't pass up the cash me. now oh no okay okay then i will <laughs> so um on friday he says to elaine don't tell everybody about this twelve thousand pound because i don't want everyone to um make fun of me and she's like yeah the plats are vicious bastards so we'll keep that between you and me sarah and adam come in and he says right i'll give you the money soon um because oh no and then they said to him you know you got run over by that. <laughs> you know you got run over by my bed. <laughs> why don't you see them? And he's like, oh, okay. Okay, right, yeah, why not? And Adam's like, um, yeah, I'll sort it out. Things have rest of really slow for Adam, Adam at the moment. Because this week he was sort, else to he do. was trying to get business from, from uh, Stephen. You know and he was mediating a weird yeah. jacket meeting between Steve and Tim. It's because he's given all his hard stuff to Dee Dee. Yeah. So Roy speaks to Spider in the cafe. Oh, that's 
the, diff- the different storyline books. Oh, yeah, like, sorry. Um, Stephen's in Adam's office, and he's like, you know, I just don't really want to do this Six Fellas thing. And Adam's like, I already sent the letter. <laughs> we'll just wait for them to um, reply. Maybe they'll sell out of court. <laughs> Stephen's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'll just pretend that didn't happen. In the pub later, Sarah tells Stephen, everything's in place. We're going to get the business up and running, but we just need that £12,000, please. What do they need it for? Business. Business expenses. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of the week. That's the end of that week for that story. Um, what did you think about the whole... Uh, did you enjoy the, the the twist of Stephen trying to make Gabrielle being controlling? I thought that was kind clever. of clever. Oh, it's just setting up Gabrielle to come back. Yeah, I And think then she'll come back and Elaine will be, be like, you're horrible. And Gabrielle will be like, why are you saying that to me? I'm the nicest woman in all of Milan because that's where I live. And then Elaine will be like, no, not... You wouldn't give him any money for his T-shirt business. And she'll say, T-shirt business? What do you mean? And then... Stephen will say, will you come and talk to me on this on this gantry, please? <laughs> and then she'll get shoved off the side. And then... Yeah, I think, I think that Christmas miracle. Gabrielle could well come back and he might do her in. Yeah. Um, but, I'm so excited. Uh, I, I want her to kill. I want her to die. Sorry. Sorry, Gabrielle. I think... Um, I don't want her to die. I want him to kill. Yeah. But yeah. I think that um, it's a, a bit of a dangerous game with him making her out to be... Um, a controlling manipulative cow because there's a lot of plats on the street who know that she's actually kind of lovely although when I it's no d- people thought that Jeff was lovely as well didn't they exactly that's the whole point of coercive control in relationships is that you will not see it unless you're mm. You know, in their house watching it play out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I thought that again, a bit like the the Alia Maria Griff story this week. Although things did happen, it kind of felt that they didn't. Maybe it was just because you know last week we decided, oh yeah, he's going to try and get her money off, uh, and then yes, that happened this week. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't enough. Um exciting twists for me this week it was fine i'm still semi enjoying the story oh i love it i'm sorry i love steven i i, I, I like this it's... week more than last week because i thought he was a bit of a hapless moron last week yeah yeah i suppose he has been a bit more, a bit more, more conniving. And conniving this I re- week, i'm sorry it? i just love conniving villains yeah but... he's just not coming across as being like super clever mega villain is he not at the moment he's still a bit li- little bit on the pathetic side <laughs> but i'm i'm also thinking in the back of my head, so what's going on with this whole Leo story? I think, do you know what? Half of his problems would be solved instantly if he just told Sarah to bugger off. Yeah. She's basically 50% of all of his all of his issues. <laughs> Uncle Stephen, can I have a lift, please? Uncle Stephen, can I have £12,000? Uncle Stephen, can you look at my pitch? <laughs> Uncle Stephen, when's I going to get the money? Grow up, Sarah, for goodness sake. Also, Got bigger problems. Why? Why doesn't your rich husband have twelve grand to lend you? Mm. He's, he's he's given up giving her money. Yeah. She's a think, bloody money pit. Like, do you think that then. Leo's gonna is gonna be coming back to the forefront well, here anytime we soon? We know that Teddy's gone to Canada to find it. Is that what happened? Did he go there? I thought, yeah, but it's big, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite big. I hope he took that big um scarf that Audrey was modelling the other day. What? The, uh, yeah. To keep you keep you cold. Oh yeah. Uh, keep you warm. Was that a snood? Was well, it? Does he, he just goes keep, keep warm and minus thirty degrees in that Audrey says. I don't think it's perfect so. for a trip across the uh, the Canadian mountains. He just needs to go to the port in Canada, the airport, and say because there's only one that goes in and out, and say, "Have you seen an English guy called Leo?" And if they say no, the job done. Mm. Come home. I they'll that, remember, won't they? I hope that comes soon. I, I I was less interested this week. I don't think there's much of a talking point here. It was it was kind of fine, and, and that was about it. So let let's move on to the John's tape storyline, which I'm sure um there will be a lot to talk about because it had a seance in, and we did see a little bit of a spoiler for this last week, didn't we? I've got. I saw a picture and I said, "Oh, Gemma, so there's going to be something there that you like." John's uh, Stapes going to have it. Well, no, so Hope's going to have a, sta- no. a seance for her dad. Um, I feel like um, they put this in to mock me because this was the worst seance. It was no Hilda seance, I'll give you that. They did, they, their technique was absolutely abominable. So Fizz and Tyrone, um, at the beginning of the week, go to school to meet the counsellor. And there's a bit of a kerfuffle when he assumes that they're Mr and Mrs Stape. But they're like, oh, no, no, we're not married. And that kind of sets the ball rolling for, um, for, uh, for wedding talk. Because they did get engaged a very long time ago. They were due to be married, but it never really happened. Fizz tried to organise a marriage, a wedding about a year and a half ago. Then the whole affair happened. 
and I guess that their engagement was called off and it never they never got back to being engaged again. But anyway, um, they later on in the cafe, Tyrone gets down on one knee and proposes to her and he wants to get hitched as soon as possible. And she says, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it. And as we were watching this scene, you were like, no, no, don't say, don't say yes first, weren't you? I was, it was completely, uh, what's the word? Mm, involuntary. I was just shaking my head all the way through. I was like, no. You just got no ounce of forgiveness in you. No, no, literally. I was thrilled by this. No, every time he said anything, I was like, well, where was this last year? Where was this energy last year? It's a romantic Christmas miracle. No, no, no. no. He's like, oh, you're the only woman for me. Oh, what? Because Alina's not here. (laughs) Oh, I've always loved you. What, even when you were shagging Alina? I... No. I I can turn a blind eye to this. Maybe maybe one or two things have gone wrong recently. What when you hooked up with another woman and uh, had her love child without know- knowing about it? Oh well. Anyway, Stop. it's happening now. No, uh, I... he's had so many years to marry this woman. He's supposedly the love of his life. He says he says, and now he just decides on a whim to propose in a cafe. Because a counsellor got them mixed up at school. Rubbish. <laughs> anyway, they go back. Also, and... this this oh. teacher, what an what an idiot! How many t- how many times has he met? They were, they were acting like it was the most outlandish, confusing family situation this counsellor's ever heard of. That a, pa- that a father I'm and a sure, mother have got a different surname. I'm sure there have been a few unmarried parents at Weatherfield High. <laughs> I think before... so. And we're not just talking about the students there. <laughs> <laughs> so Tyrone and Fizz go back home and tell the girls about this uh, no. future wedding. Rubbish. Hope's a little bit sceptical about it, yeah, what with how this right. wedding with Phil went this summer. And and Ruby is there. I, I Ruby's don't know like, what. I don't care about anything. Anymore. Ruby's there, I'm just dead behind the eyes. really desperately trying to emote, but not Ruby, quite managing you know what it. What I think's happened. I think Ruby saw Stephen kill Leo, and she's just died <laughs> internally. No, uh, and she can't. But she a kind can't of Ruby, sadly, has, has been happening for a few few years now okay. I'm, I'm very sad to I'm say to be nice. but um anyway there's a ding dong at the door and um it's the author the author of the john state book his name is mr bookman yes mr bookman and he's very very sorry for the effect that the books had on them and he suddenly acquired a conscience about this whole uh, scenario which is bizarre really um he, well, he's just there to facilitate giving them yeah, he he gives them a bag with all his research um, of John Stape in. He's got this big old jiffy bag, hasn't he? And he says, oh, I want you to have it so no one can get their hands on it. Why don't you don't just worry, destroy it, it Why do you think that they want it? Just Phil's already made a dossier of his own, so it's not original information, is it? Yeah, but anyway, he... he... The real reason he's there, I suppose, is because this book's selling really badly and it's got those bad reviews, which are what Tyrone put on, obviously. And, um, and he wants them to take down... The uh, he wants to get people to take down these reviews or or something, and and Tom is like, no, I'm not doing that. But I will take your bag. Good day to you, sir. And slams the door in his face. So Wednesday, um, Tyrone is um trying to find this Jiffy bag, but Fizz says, oh, don't worry about it. I've given it to Gemma's because they're gonna put it in the attic at number five because we gotta make sure that whatever happens, Hope does not find this bag. And um, that's the most important thing of the week. Yes. So we we can't let Hope have get, be anywhere near this jiffy bag. Next scene. Gemma, can you look after Hope? Can you babysit her later today? Can she be under, in the house with this thing? You have you put it in the attic, attic haven't you? where she hid out with Joseph. Yeah, but she definitely doesn't know how to get down. Yeah, Elda, is it all right if you if you babysit her? It's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Bring her around later. Um, but when Fizz is gone, Gemma admits to Chesney, she hasn't actually put the stuff in the attic yet because the... But she said the steps the broken, broken or something like that. She just stuffs it in a cupboard. Jobs are good. I'll just put it in the biscuit cupboard. Yeah. No, why, why would any kid want to go looking in there? So um, over at the cafe, <laughs> we've got Sam, Hope and Joseph making a, a rare appearance there. How have these children got all this money to buy milkshakes left, right and centre? Um, don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's Sam's inheritance, I'm going to say. Um, he, <laughs> He's burning through it. Yeah, Nick's going to be furious. Got it, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, Bernie goes up to them and kind of makes a joke about it. it looks like they're having a seance there, sort of, sort of, uh, sitting at a table. 
There's because, probably lots of people that sit at a table in a cafe. Because Bernie knocked, he knocked the, Hope knocked her milkshake over and Bernie turned it upside down, put it back on the table and went, oh, it's like a seance. Yes. And then it kind of explains what it is and says, oh yeah, me and my mates used to pretend to do these all the time when we were little. So this gives Hope an idea. I don't believe that for a minute. I don't believe that she pretended. I think she did real ones. Because you know Bernie's a bit spooky, don't you? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. So um, back at home, back at number five, this is, it's actually Bernie that's looking after Hope and the others. And she heads upstairs for a nap very convenient she's like I'm going to leave you alone with the jiffy bag that's hidden in the biscuit cupboard she didn't know that the I know jiffy she doesn't bag know. was hid there if you need me knock on the ceiling much like a ghost might do in a seance <laughs> so Hope immediately gets up once she's been left alone in the house while with, with Sam and Joseph and says right we're going to do a seance she says it's like googling but with dead people which is quite a good line um, so they set things up lights are out notice she said googling and not voggling I, you always point this out. They always say Googling on Coronation Street. They just don't show Googling. So, their seance, and, and you say that this doesn't quite match how a seance should go. They've well, got a pack a of cards. They've got a plastic blue Wrong. tumbler. And, and that's about it, really. The right. lights are out. And so they, they're going to use those to try and contact the, the restless spirit of John State. Seance commences. Joseph is over it before it even starts, basically. And he's like, oh, I oh, don't fancy this. I want to go and get some biscuits out of the cupboard. Rubbish. But of course, he opens the cupboard door and the jiffy bag just falls out and spills out on the floor in front of them. Oh, it's a sign, says Hope. John obviously is here. My dad is here with us and he wants to, he wants to communicate with us. So they, they look through all of this stuff in the jiffy bag and there's, you know, photographs, there's papers and dossiers and everything and a very ancient artefact, a cassette tape. What's that? Well, <laughs> this, this, this was the scene that me and you kind of paused it and were like, what the heck is this? Because they're, like, uh, they're, they're, they're looking at this thing and, and Sam's like, oh, I hear back in the olden days they used to stream things using physical media. Rather, I can't remember, it's something along those lines, doesn't it? It's like they? what, like a CD? It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. That the, the, They had decided to he, have these was, children completely, you know, he, he baffled was, by the idea that media could be consumed on anything physical when, when they he, were literally standing in front of the CD player in the house. I know, I know, I know that they might not really know what a tape is, but they understand that physical media exists as a concept because they go to shops and they get bought these things and mm. they watch DVDs and listen to CDs and it's just, that was the most annoying. It, it may well have been the first time they'd seen a tape, although there yeah. is such a load of tat in number five, isn't there? It wouldn't yeah. surprise me that there are a couple of tapes stuffed on that bookshelf behind them as well. But yeah, it seemed like it was a silly line, silly Sam line to say, I, I didn't buy that and, and that really kind of... But he also said going, I, was like, I was looking on a website about ancient ancient technology, technology or something what yeah. like how they made the pyramids no cassette tapes mm. I said to you at the time it should have been like on a mini disc or something that would because I think that you know a cassette tape yeah maybe they haven't seen one or held one or anything before but I think even children like them would look at this and go okay I know what this is but if it was a mini disc then maybe it would have been like, well, what is this is just mysterious a thing? I don't. It's not oh, a tape. Oh no, I was thinking of the other one. What's the What's the little mini? Yeah, like you get an addictophone. You're thinking of. <sighs> no, I'm thinking of actual mini discs, like I used to have when I was well, when I was in know. my early twenties, because I was cool and on the rocking, on the cutting edge of technology, actually. And, you um, would know whether children know what a tape is. Take one in and ask them. I, I guess I mean, I haven't got one. We don't actually do we? <laughs> I am going to try that out on my class tomorrow and say, "What's this, everybody?" And then the proof coronation is wrong. But anyway, I thought that was just a little bit silly, really. Um, it just it really, really honestly bothered me. It, a lot. it yeah, I, it, yeah, unreasonably bothered us, really. So anyway, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie what? comes no. home. She comes downstairs. She comes, oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, she's because she comes downstairs and she's like, "What the hell have you been doing?" Because their seance gear, basically, what what they do is they've got the cards in a circle and the tumbler in the middle. And they're saying that, well, Sam's there says, oh, we can have the red cards being from A to F. And, oh, my uh, God. And she's like, oh, I know I do. This, like, this is like when you used to have to text people using the buttons. Yeah. And all the, all the letters were the letters on one number. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, Bernie's like, what the hell are you doing? I can't have you doing this. She's kind of rushes it to clear it in time, clear it away in time for Chesney and the quads to come home. And, um, and, and the kids kind of stuff the tape into the cupboard behind them. And at home later... 
Tyrone and Fizz see Hoax using the laptop and they send her off to bed and they look at her search history and that was kind of funny. We paused it and had to look at all the websites that they've been looking up, like pay you gas, it wasn't that exciting, was it? Pay it you gas really. bills, Weatherfield Council, Weatherfield Gazette. Um, but yeah, they also find that she's been looking at this retro tech site and they think it's quite quaint that she's been doing a little bit of a modern history research. But meanwhile, Hope is sitting on the stairs winding the tape up with a pen because they, yeah what learned. I didn't what I didn't say earlier is when they find this tape all the actual tape itself was ribbon kind of down. yeah ribbon down and fallen out of it and um a bit of impressive if it works really it reminded me of my horrible t experience when I was little and we had a spectrum and 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 that was on, and that was one of the old games machines that had a tape. Did you ever ever had a game machine no. with a tape loader? Oh my gosh, it took so long for things to load. And um and we had this game on it called <laughs> Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and that was my favourite game. I don't know how old I was. I must have been like six or seven or something like this. And um, I remember one time coming downstairs, and and my sister had taken the Frankie <gasps> Goes to Hollywood tape, what? and she she was like two, three maybe at the no time, excuse. and she'd pulled the tape out, and I could never play that game again. And I've all these never years later, it. yeah, nearly forty years later, I've still not forgiven. You're right, not my to. sister for ruining my Frankie Goes to Hollywood tape. Because so. those tapes were like really expensive, weren't they? I'll tell you what, if Sam found out that you also used to play video games on the tape, it's his, his head, it, exactly, his head would explode. So anyway, that's what's going on there. She's learnt the secret of putting a pen into a tape and winding it. And probably their minds were blown when they realised that you used to be able to write things down with a pen and you didn't just type it like they do you, for everything now. believe it? <laughs> also, do you not have very vivid memories of when you were little, how often you'd be walking about somewhere and there would be a tape strewn with its ribbon fluttering on a hedge? That seems to happen quite a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right really? alongside the uh, the hedge adult magazines, you know, the, <laughs> the hedge tape. The hedge all tape. you could find all sorts of things in hedges when we were younger. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a great. Gold it was a treasure mine, trove, not like wasn't these it? Days. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's. I've just realised I have been calling these episodes Monday, Wednesday, and so Friday, even though I was determined not to. But on Friday, you, which was actually Friday, well, which is a couple of days time. 62nd anniversary of Coronation Street. Well, it is Hope's birthday, <laughs> isn't it? She's, she's um she's got a birthday laptop from Fizz and Tyrone, and um she, she just wants an old tape player though, doesn't she? She's asking about this, but they say, "Oh no, it broke yonks ago," and um and she kind of makes out that Sam's made her a mixtape of songs, which they think is very cute, and Ruby's there teasing her about having a boyfriend. Um, and anyway, they also revealed during this conversation that they found a wedding venue for July. So um, at this point, it's like, oh, it's going to be ages away. What's going to happen in between now and then? But things speed up a little bit as the episode goes on. Tyrone goes over to Roy's, borrows his old tape machine. Um, and then he goes back home and has a conversation with Fizz, who admits she doesn't like the sound of all this fancy wedding planning. Can't we just keep it simple? So that gets the old cogs whirring in Tyrone's head. They go to the cafe, have a birthday party for Hope, where she wins a cassette player and a game of Pass the Parcel. Um, with it was a massive party, isn't it? A very popular girl is Hope. She's got three other children at her yep. birthday party. One of them's a sister, but I suppose who I, hates her? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose I can talk. Um, anyway, they go back home, um, and Hope is given some alone time to listen to this supposed mixtape that Sam's been given her. She puts it in. And yeah, as we've mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, it turns out it's a study guide for Little Women featuring John Stape. Well, recorded by John Stape. And yeah. I still, you know, none the wiser about whether this is actually something that he recorded back in, you know, 10 plus years ago when he was in the show. Whether they got him in to record it again, I don't know. But it was very nice hearing his voice again. Well, Hope's never heard his voice, really. Not really at all, no. No. So I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying her how she's kind of connecting with her dad in this way. It is kind it's of kind of creepy and weird, really, but also yeah, yeah, weird way. Yeah, I it, think it, this and, is and it also is does delightful. kind of feel kind of natural as well that yeah. you know lots of kids would want to connect with their with their parents that they're not with it's anymore. It's kind of heartbreaking. I know it is. It's actually a really interesting story. Yeah, I yeah I, I am. I, I think they're doing a good job with yeah. this. Um, over at the cafe, meanwhile. Joseph is still there with um, Chesney Gemma. and Gemma, who scoff in her face with sausage rolls and pink onions. I got a real kind of old school Gemma vibe <laughs> from this. Not so old school that we're going back to when she was she like, a really great drugs. character. 
But a couple of years ago, when when the uh, was Coronation Street was you know Gemma overload, and they just have her being as vile as they could in every scene, I was getting they missed a great opportunity. Getting a flashback of that, to, to, to be honest, what a great opportunity for a joke here because Gemma had a mouthful of sausage rolls and she kept trying to talk around it. Funnily enough, never thought to use her oh, yeah, she sign language she? skills. <laughs> Which you would have thought would have come in quite handy. That's probably the main incentive for her to um, learn BSL. Forget Alad, she can now talk, she can talk with her the mouthful mouthful. perfectly. Well, it's not <laughs> nobody can understand it. That's the trouble. Uh, okay, so th- yeah, Joseph's really really sleepy there, um, and and it turns out that he didn't sleep very much last night because he was getting worried about Tell all this what? whole seance thing. This is this was the bane of my life when I was a kid, right? All the spooky stuff and that we used to get up to when I was a kid. There's always one little wet blanket that would go crying to mum and dad. Oh, I'm too scared they're ghosts. Stop ruining it for everyone what else, Joseph. What spooky stuff did you get up to when All you were kinds a kid? of like yeah, seances, uh, ghost recordings. Used to do, oh, pendulum. Sticks board like as a feather. No, I never did that. Where you where you true. get the pendulum and you um you make it a certain distance and that's how you detect mm. like male or female spirits. Yeah. We found, definitely found the spirit of a Roman soldier in Did my you? friend Emily's house for sure. Did you do Bloody Mary? Yeah, that was a good one at school. That's what I in say. The girls when, school. That's what I say when Mary comes on Coronation Street and she's overacting. <laughs> bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, and then Patty Clare appears in your living room. <laughs> okay, well, could you leave me alone? That was in the script. <laughs> I can't help it. I was directed to overact that scene. So um, anyway, I've lost where I am. So yeah, G- Gemma well, storms round number nine and says. Did you know that your hope made my <laughs> Joseph and Sam have a seance? She's mad as hell be because now mad. Joseph is scared. I'd say, I heard that they did a seance and they did it completely incorrectly. Didn't invite me along. And they didn't use a Ouija board, which I guess is because it's copyrighted, but the planchette was rubbish. They've had a Ouija board on Coronation Street before. Toya and Leanne have had a, a Ouija board. Yeah, but there's a difference between were... a Ouija board and like putting paper on. Yeah, there is. So anyway, um, they Fizz and Tyrone sit Hope down and says, oh, we know you did the seance and how you, and you know, you scared Joseph. That's not very nice, is it? And they, they she basically say just they says, don't they, 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 they don't work. Well, that's, that's, it's just disrespectful to people like me. That's besmirching my beliefs. I'm going to write to Ofcom about this because actually I'm very spiritual and is that right? I'm offended. I don't believe you. Hope says, oh yeah, I know they're, they're just silly. We shouldn't have done it. Because uh, I wasn't. I was kind of wondering when the seance was going on. Did Hope actually believe that she could do this? Did she think that they she were also, real? She seemed smart enough to not believe them because she only she only had her hand on the on the on the glass. Everyone's hand should have been on the glass. You're really critiquing Hope's seance they, technique. I'm sorry. They needed For an a expert. first timer. No, I thought she did a pretty good. They job. needed an expert on the set to help them it, set up that board properly. <laughs> Um, anyway. How would she expect to, to, for it to move if she's if not everyone's touching it? That's the whole point. She, Carry on, Michael. I'm not going to interrupt you again. She. But what so, I'm going to. Ah, <laughs> she says that look, I don't need to contact him anymore. I'm fine. It's over because obviously she knows that she's got this tape that she can listen to now. So like, dad's with her all the time. Oh, that's and, really um, sad. I know it's very sad. And we didn't. I don't think we got to see another scene of her like secretly listening no, to it in bed. But um, it. yeah, it is really sad actually. And then also this episode, I think it's towards the end of it, we have a scene with Chesney and Tyrone in the bistro where Tyrone admits to him, "Don't tell anyone," but he's secretly organising a surprise soon wedding for Fizz on Christmas Day, no less. So two years time. Um, this wasn't in two years. No, sorry, time. two weeks time. <laughs> two weeks time. Fizz and Tyrone married. Is it going to happen, Gemma? I know you don't want it to happen, so you don't need to Rubbish. tell me that. But do you think they are actually going to get married or is something going to go wrong? They're going to ruin Christmas Day by getting married. You reckon so? I think that this is going to be a warm, fuzzy Christmas wedding. I hope it goes right. Well, it'll be a few year... little low-key shenanigans. Yeah, probably. I think, yeah, there's going to be something. I mean, the fact that he has arranged this wedding without telling her... Um, that's kind of asking for disaster, isn't it? Look at look what happened to Alan Bradley and Rita when he made a turn up at the register office that time. She didn't like time. it, did she? Didn't like no. that. But um, yeah, I I think that I think that they will get married because we had a Christmas wedding last year, didn't we, with um, Emma and Curtis? 
Remember that? That was about a year ago. That went a bit wrong. So I hope that hope it works this oh, time. Yeah, it will, and it will we've fine. we've been asking for Tyrone and Fizz to get married for years. And although I know Gemma is saying that no, he it... doesn't want it, I know that secretly deep down inside he's going to be really pleased that this thing we've been begging for is we actually happening. Oh, I'm so excited! I love a nice coronation. Don't street wedding. take him back. I love a nice coronation street wedding of a couple that I really care about because. There's, you know, weddings are ten a penny, really, in Weatherfield. But if you're putting together, you know, oh, look, Gary and Maria are getting married. Oh, look, Sarah Louise and Adam are getting married. So what? I don't care about them. But, yeah, Fizz and Tyrone, I think that that is absolutely right. And I know that he's been a very naughty boy, but I can't help being happy about this. Um, anything to say about this story? I thought this was all right this week. I'm sad that you didn't find the seance very exciting. More seances, fewer weddings. I was also I was a bit um I was a bit confused about the fact that this the the book's not selling because it felt before the book was coming out that literally John Stape is the country's most notorious serial killer yep. and everybody was talking about it and this is gonna be the, the biggest seller since name me a best in selling cold book. Blood. In cold blood. Okay. Um <laughs> But not, but it's not selling just because of a few reviews. So I I thought it doesn't really match. I think people would still buy it anyway if somebody as famous as John that, you know, who clearly was famous in the world of Weatherfield. But I, I don't know. I'm just being nitpicky again. Anything to add, Dara? No more weddings of Tyrone and Fizz. Summertime. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think I think um, we should say. Five nice things about summer. Um, number one, she's very pretty. Mm -hmm. no very good robot maker. Number two, very good making models of robots. Mm -hmm. Number three, she she's smart. She's uh, yeah. she, she she's, she's book smart. Book smart. She's book smart. Number four, she's got a very tall boyfriend. <laughs> number five, um, she's very um, um she's a very uh, persistent in her um, lying about things. So yeah. she, I like the fact that she won't let evidence that is not working out get stop her from doing something. Yeah, exactly. When there she thinks of a somewhere. plan, even if it goes completely wrong and it's a bad idea, she won't stop doing it. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Now we Good. can go, okay. go back to, to slagging her off again. But I would like, because I know I've heard some people um, on our Facebook, I've seen some people on our Facebook group saying that actually are fans of Summer. There are some Summer fans out there. Absolutely. So I please, would you write in to tell us why you like Summer and give us your top fives of what you like about her? Because she definitely has her fans and she's not... Um, I'll stop talking. On Wednesday... What happened this week? Wednesday, i.e. Middle Thursday. Episodes. The Thursday um, episode this week. So, Summer's not morning sick anymore because she's not pregnant anymore. So she tells Jacob that she's taken this new medicine that's stopping her morning sickness. And then she says to Aaron, oh, I'm worried. Oh, this lies. I think it's not a good idea because I might forget what, my lying, what I'm lying about. Maybe, uh, But I don't think that we should... Um, Tell the truth because it's too soon. And Aaron just sitting there the whole time like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, needs, she needs to work out what she's going to tell Esther and Mike. Yes, you do. So, um, somewhere in the factory uh, with Jacob and everybody. And for some reason, d d even though they're all operating like machinery all day long, they bring out some mulled wine for everyone to have. And someone's about to take it and Jacob goes, no! That's mulled wine that's got alcohol in it. And everyone's like, ooh, ooh, are you, are you got it? Uh, I know, it's, it's Fizz that's yeah. I thought that was really cute. And she's like, oh, have you got a little Eccles cake in the oven? I thought that was a lovely was line. Very cute. And, and very uh, nice everyone was kind of like, ooh. And someone's like, Sally's like, no. like gossip. Someone's like, no, 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 no. I, I, no, no. And Jacob's like, oh, no, I didn't mean to. to no, I don't, I don't even know why I said that. Well, oh, my God. It's like everybody kind of knows now, don't they? Or they think they know. Because Fizz is like, okay, okay. Well, Don't I guess we're not allowed any... to pry, but <laughs> so they're, they're, yeah, they're convinced they're at this point. So someone gets, feels even more guilty later on that everybody's lying on her behalf about things and they don't even realise that they're lying and it's all just getting incredibly messy. So then on Friday, someone's been texted by Esther. She wants to come over and someone's just like, no, I, oh, I wish they wouldn't, but I can't say no. Amy comes and she says, how come all of your anti-sickness 
sickness pills are in the bin and someone's like oh I can't think of a lie even though I already told them that I'm taking different medication um <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> she did, didn't she? so she says I've had a miscarriage so Amy t- lends a sympathetic ear to, to Summer and they go to the cafe to talk about it and she wonders about how how Amy, um, how Esther and Mike are going to react and Roy kicks them out because Hope's birthday party is going to be there. Um, so she doesn't, she, they still don't really know. So on the way back, they go back home, sorry, and Amy makes Summer tell Jacob. And Amy's kind of disgusted with her about the fact that she's lying about all this stuff and she hasn't told them. And she says, the old Summer would never have done anything like this. I prefer the old Summer. <laughs> Summer's robot, that you're back. That was too much on the nose when Amy was saying this. <laughs> oh, that was love. When she said the old Summer, I just thought that was amazing. Hello, yep. Summer's robot. Um, Summer's robot. Summer's robot. Uh, how, how have you been? Um, I can't remember how ro- <laughs> Summer's robot <laughs> operates anymore. Oh, Summer's robot, you're going to need to go back in your box. How do? How, how do, Summer's robot? Yeah, sorry. Uh, you, you're, you're not the most popular um, addition to our podcast, Summer's robot. But, um, uh, Shut up, okay. Michael. Uh, no, I'll we're get not, on with it do shall this. I, yeah, shall I yeah. do a bit more? Okay, talking? I'll, I'll put Summer's robot back in the box. Summer's robot, um, what 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 have you been doing um, recently? Oh, <laughs> what have you been up to? I've been upstairs listening to the tapes. <laughs> oh, I love, you know what I love these. Yeah, that's true. You need to go and tell Sam about these tapes. Um, and oh, no, you that's want to... enough now. Leo. Oh, that's enough. That's Your favourite character, Summer's robot. Leo. Oh, anyway, back in the box you go. People have been asking about you. Um, he he may not make another appearance. For he quite may a never while turn time. up. He may again. not appear again. But okay. I thought it's. Amy says old summer would never <sighs> have done this, and then Michael got excited about bringing the robot back. I yeah. Anyway, then Esther and Mike turn up at the door, and oh, what will happen? Dilemma. And um, Amy says, "You better tell them, or I will." Rude. So it's an empty threat because she buggies off, um, and they're not very happy that Amy and Jacob know about this arrangement because they want to keep it a secret. And someone says, oh, no, no, no they're, they're my friends. They won't tell anybody. And uh, they said, well, they better not do because this whole plan is um, can't go wrong because if it does go wrong, who knows what we'll do because we're obviously crazy. And then Aaron blurts out after him sitting here, wincing every time someone tells a lie and acting like he's so emotionally distraught by her her fakery. He says, oh, don't worry, she heard it, she felt a kick this morning. And they're like, yay, we bought you a present. It's a fetal Doppler. <laughs> Michael fetal and I are like, what the hell is a, fe- a fetal? We thought that they said beetle Doppler, didn't we, when we first heard it? <laughs> okay, it's a machine to listen to the baby. But it's, you've got to have a baby in there to listen to. That's a, <laughs> unfortunately, that's a bit of a snag. Esther and Mike have got this poor girl with her pants down, listening to her stomach, and they're stomach like... Stomach in her pants. And they're trying to, yeah, m- manipulate this thing to get in the right position. And someone's like, oh, oh, stop, stop. I can't do this anymore. She's like, yeah, so it's the, it's a bit like, what were they doing last week or the other week when she was, when she was like, well, oh, they were touching can't... her stomach or something. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Last week they were just, yeah, touching her tum. This week so they get a little bit too in, it's creepy. Uh, intimate with her. Summer goes to speed dial later and tells Amy that I just need, I just need more time. I need to figure out what to do. And Amy says, this is not like you. I prefer the old Summer. And it's cruel. And Summer says, I'll tell them tomorrow then. <sighs> Go on then. Just do, oh my gosh, fine, fine. Yeah, lovely. More, what do you predict more... their reaction will be? You said to me, you are kind of hoping that this oh. will never happen. I No, I want them to turn out to be actually in the cult of Nirab. That, that's the only thing that I think is going to make me enjoy this storyline now, if it turns out that there's going to be a mega throwback and they're not actually crazy Christians, but they're trying to steal this baby away to, to offer to the the, uh, the etheric foundation, who was the cult that um, stole away... Um, Zoe Tattersall back in the late 90s but, um, I think I think see they could because they could like you know they've got a set now haven't they for their house and wouldn't it be cool like, do you remember in, when they had that the, the meeting at the cult near our picture. place and they had the picture the like impressionist picture of Brian Park the producer who was supposed to be near Ab. and if you didn't watch Coronation Street back at the time you probably got no idea what I'm talking about but you, they could just have like as a little you know, a visual yeah, like reference a... or a little <gasps> mini clue that if you see it, you know, and if you don't, you don't know. Just say, look, can I, they're in it. 
I don't remember too much about it. Can I ask you, did they call themselves the Cult of Nirab? I can't know. I think that they were called the Etheric Foundation. Well, there you go. They could call themselves the Etheric Foundation. Or and something like that. Because anyway. honestly, if they called themselves the Cult of Nirab, it, would, it sounds stupid. It wouldn't work. <laughs> but if they said they were from the Etheric Foundation... They're just like really, really creepy, aren't they're they? Not. They're acting quite similar to how... Um, I can't remember what, the, what they were called, the two people from there. One of them was... They're but not. Gorman. I feel really bad for them. They're excited. They're gonna have a baby. They fe- that it's a pure love that they they're feeling, but it's an unusual situation. So it looks and and feels creepy. Uh, I feel really bad for them. Well, I I, I kind of do, but but I, I would also... prefer it if they turned out to be in a cult. Yeah. Is that, is that what do you think is gonna happen? I think that Mike's going to say, well, I'll just put a baby in there. Well, that's what we said last week, didn't yeah. we? Is Mike going to suggest something else? So this story hasn't particularly progressed other than Summer's deciding that she doesn't want to tell them and how am I going to tell them all what a mess I'm in, all sad eyebrows. I feel really bad for her because I don't think she really understands how common miscarriages are. And Maybe Mike and Nesta not. will be Especially really upset. Especially on Street. But then, then it's not like it was never a possibility. No, no, I know. Well, it's it's all to do with this money, isn't it? That because they, they and, and well, they, if they find out when did you find out about it, and, well, and she yeah, could lie, but and she has accepted some money from them since we're knowing. There was no formal lost the baby. contract, though, was there? No, because it's a little bit illegal. They should really illegal. have talked about mm. what would happen if the baby. Yeah. Anyway, that's that storyline. Talking of um, rubbish stories, we got the Steve and Tim stuff. No. Well, there, there were. I saw some people saying that the Tim and Steve stuff was some of their favourite bit about last <laughs> week. So I'm sorry for, well, for they were here to talk criticizing about it. <laughs> it. But it's just more bickering, basically, isn't it? This it's week, two it's just two acting, great, acting like, like kids. Honestly, Hope's more mature. Yeah, she is. They're bickering at the cab office, and to cut a long story short, Eileen ends up with tea spilled down the top because of their bickering. So she calls in Adam to hold a mediation session because he's got nothing else better to do. Um, Tim puts a suit on for his mediation, and he wants Sally there to support him. They go to the pub. It's basically just bickering with Adam sitting there, I'm going to say. But in the end of it, he rules in favour of Steve. Because he bought the jacket and it's his fair and square. And Steve kind of leaves the pub very triumphant. So on Wednesday's episode, which is Thursday, and then he caught myself out there. Tim's still banging on about this bloody jacket at the beginning of it. Eileen is just as fed up of hearing about it as I am. And she wants to start a jar where every time they mention the jacket, they put a pound in it. Can so, we um, have I, the money? I think, I think if Stephen, he needs to case the joy and rob speed doll. Because surely they must have earned £12,000 worth with the amount of the jackets getting towards about at the moment. Write it down. St- um, so then we have, oh my gosh, it's Steve, Sally, Tim. <laughs> I can't really, I can't give up with this story. It's pretty ridiculous. Sally realizes that she needs to take control with this Steve and Tim situation. So she goes and finds Tim in the pub and says, "Right, stop going on about this jacket. And if you do, then I'll stop going on about Aggie and the fact that you were her best friend." And Tim's like, "I kind of thought you had stopped going on about it, to be honest. But yeah, that seems like a good no deal one cares to me." About that story Fine. Anymore. Um, so yeah, is that over with now? I guess it is, but it, that, that's the thing, like it already was, was over no... with. Yeah. I don't know. So anyway, Steve, uh, Eileen tries to give Tim the proceeds of the jacket jar at the end of Friday's episode, but he says, oh no, I'm drawing a line under the whole thing and I'm not going to accept it. And Sally says, well, I'm going to spend it on a drink. And that's the end of that. Is it the end? Can they I, promise I, us? I really, I really, I'm flipping waste of time. Well, listen, stupid story. you didn't like that, but lots of people don't like this one, which is the play storyline. Well, no. And and this is a story because um, th- there's an awful lot of stuff in the news this week, some of which is um, Ian McLeod um, had an interview uh, last week. There was a press day on Thursday, wasn't there, for the precinct, which we were invited to. I was me say. so Gemma hoping was, to go. I, I, w- I would never have been able to go with my work, but we were really heavily trying to organise Gemma going so there. It's so impossible to get there without... It's, it's Spending just too far away. It's or... really, really expensive. Something came up with Gemma's work anyway, so we couldn't have gone. But yeah, we were really, really close to being able to yeah. go to this press day. Well, Gemma was very annoying. But anyway, yeah, yeah was, so McLeod had a, had an interview it. there, and one of the things that he he said was about this storyline that some of his writers said, "I quote, oof, 
when he said what was going on with this storyline. And that's quite a bold move to say I that... I kind of like him for saying that. <laughs> well, it's kind of saying I'm the boss and what I say goes. I don't care can... what you think. <laughs> but I think maybe he needs to listen to them. Not that I've got to make a problem with this storyline. I, I know lots of people have, but I'm, like I've said before, the, the play stuff is winding me up a little bit, but I really am enjoying the the romance, the... the um, the, the 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 love triangle that's going on between Martha and Wendy, although not a whole lot happens in this week, does it? Mar- Martha, Wendy, and Ken. It's not just Martha and Wendy, although that would be interesting. Yes. On Friday, Ken and Wendy plan a romantic veggie lasagna evening. Oh, Toya knows all about them. She's not anymore. No. <laughs> she might do. I expect Spider. Like I know she's not going out with Spider anymore, is she? No, she's been. Oh. She's uh, d- veggie she's lasagnas just do- for doing one. a bit of a Henry the Eighth, didn't she? Oh. Later on, Mary's hyperventilating into a brown bag because she's having a meltdown over her lines, and Nigel asks Martha to run an emergency workshop. And Ken's getting all flirty with Martha, saying, "Oh, you look sensational." I tell you what, she did look pretty cracking, didn't she? She had a nice <laughs> um, a scarf and a shirt combo. Yes. Later on, um, Mary's not doing too bad of a job. Uh, Nigel, um, Nigel, and everyone's like, "Wow, you're amazing! This is such a great rehearsal." Good old Martha. And Martha says, "You know what, everyone? Let's celebrate by going to an experimental play reading that some of my friends are doing." <laughs> she and jokes Ken's... that everyone's going to be naked, doesn't she? And that gets Ken's, Ken's pulse Ken's racing. Like, ha, 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 yeah. Um, Ken's like, "Yeah, brilliant." And Brian says, "Are you not going to invite Wendy?" And, and Ken's like, "Oh no, no, she's doing something else." Shut Going out with an old friend. Trying tonight. to cramp my style. He, he bumps into Wendy at the market and he kind of invites her, but it's the last minute thing. And she says, oh, no, 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 I don't fancy it. Um, and then he tells her what it is and she's like, I'd rather I'd rather watch Coronation Street. <laughs> um, Brian and Mary come over and uh, they mentioned then that Martha's going and she didn't know this. Yeah, Ken, Ken and Wendy's kind of walking detail. off like, hmm... Not happy yeah, she's, about yeah, she's, she's feeling upset, left out and she's feeling scorned for this other woman. Mm. So they all How go does to it this. feel now, Wendy? Hmm? Yeah. She's on the other foot. Uh, hmm. They all go to this play reading and they come back at the theatre. <laughs> I had a few flash. I had flashbacks of sometimes when we've been to the the theatre and mm. have. Uh, I've been sitting in a group and somebody oh, yeah, says to Brian, us, I had no you... idea what was going yeah, on with this. And that, that was about absolutely this. me. Martha and Ken um, were talking and saying, oh yeah, I thought it was great, blah, blah, blah. And, and then yeah, Brian's like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> and I just thought, it's just Michael all over. Yeah. Uh, she's very happy about it. And yeah. um, she is also, Martha, happy that Wendy doesn't like experimental theatre because she thinks that's a bit of a one-up on her. And... Um, then she says to Ken, what do you and Wendy have in common? And he's like, oh, loads of things. Like we like, um, we like stately homes and we like regional pastries. <laughs> and Mar- Martha's like, oh, I don't know if that's exciting enough, is it? You've got enough, you've got plenty of miles left in your engine for life in the fast lane. And he's yeah. like, oh, maybe I could just eat yeah, he's, Each pastry is popular in all parts being, of the UK. Is like, he being wooed away by Martha again? Not an Eccles yes. cake, but more like... I know, it was a Manchester tart they were going to eat, wasn't yeah. it? Maybe I'll just have a Bakewell tart. <laughs> anyway, the, that, that story was, again, the same old stuff that we've been saying. Kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying Martha while she's here. Enjoying Randy Ken. Nothing new particularly. No. And finally... Just to end this, God, uh, this, this is long, off, we have got, if this feels long, Lawrence, can I just sum this up and say Lawrence yeah. is coming round for Christmas at and number 11. And nobody really wants him to come apart from... Well, Todd's, well, Todd's getting jealous and it fe- feels like Todd fancies Sean out of nowhere. Well, yeah, the, this, this kind of came at the end of last week's episode, didn't it? There's a bit where George no, is laying yeah. it on thick to Todd like, oh, hasn't Sean really fallen for Lawrence? It would be devastating if something upset the relationship. And it's like, like oh, oh, well, no. that sounds like quite a good Christmas story, actually. So um, <laughs> I think I think maybe we're going to have a, a Christmas Day fumble between Lawrence and Todd, maybe. Oh, I thought he fancied Sean. Who does Todd fancy then? No, Todd fancies Lawrence. Well, I thought it was weird. What's weird? The, that Todd would fancy Sean. Why would you think that? Because he's getting upset. No, he's, he fancies Lawrence, if you remember. Um, like, oh, anyway. I'm not interested 
so no, I don't it's not know. interesting. <laughs> not interesting. So yeah, we've kind of run out of steam a little bit on this, but it's okay because it's the end of the street talk. Right. We're now going to recharge with a cup of tea before we do our news. But of course, we have to rate this week first, as is tradition. Mm -hmm. um, last week, if you remember, we scored Coronation Street one and a half out oh, of yeah, five. Yeah, we did, didn't we? That was bitchy. I'm going to say that this it wasn't bitchy. It was honest. Okay. Coronation Street need to tell about these things sometimes. Honest. I'm going to say that I think I like this week more. There was Steve, there was more fun Stephen things. I like for sale. There was a lot of Stephen in last week. No, but I said I didn't like him falling over. Oh, up his I worry about, I worry, worry about Todd Boyce. <laughs> I think he's a stunt man, it's okay. Um, oh I like the, I like the John stuff and I like. I kind of like the John stuff. I, yeah, I liked okay, bits give, of the, the extremism storyline. I'm going to give this two and a half. Two and, and a half, half what? tub thumping, wet liberals, shouting Christmas songs. But really, they should be shouting Christmas songs. They should be singing non-denominational winter market songs. <laughs> well, I am going to give this one. I'm going to give this um, two. Two or two and a half. I'm going to give it two ocean landmines <laughs> out of five <laughs> <laughs> um and i don't know about character of the week um oh, God, i did really enjoy watching griff this week but... i know Kurt, can we give it to griff well, you know we as can. we say i saw very early on in the episode pat Phelan was one of our most voted character of the week but you see you have often said that your character pick is somebody that you admire who's done something good no, sometimes and i it, always say that my favorite character is the one i enjoy watching the most and not necessarily somebody that i would recommend yeah, I mean, I did enjoy how Alia elbowed him. That was quite fun this week. And she was, like, like I said, very good for standing up to them a few times. Well, I think it's good that he's adding conflict to the to the show because you need, you need an antagonist. Yeah, he does. I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to vote for Griff as character of the week. I am as well. Because I, I, enjoyed, I, I enjoyed watching him. And, you know, with the bits that he was on, I was like, yeah. I'm not like, yeah, <laughs> go Griff. But th this is interesting to me. That oh, is it. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. So Griff. It's not season one of Big Brother, is it? It's gonna got to have a bit more backstabbing and and evil shenanigans and manipulation. Exactly. Exactly. He's the nasty Nick. <laughs>